All right, everybody, welcome to Monday afternoon office hour. Uh, with uh, another period of very active weather conditions going on uh, in different parts of California. Once again, it's a fairly different storm up north than uh, it is down south. So another uh, instance of uh, rather different uh, conditions in northern and southern California with something else yet again entirely distinct going on in central California with this one. So a lot to talk about today. Uh, main reason I wanted to do this session a bit earlier is to talk about the uh, the severe thunderstorms, uh, a couple of them that have developed so far in the Central Valley and others that are uh, likely to develop later this afternoon. This is one of those days where there is a bit more of a severe thunderstorm threat than it would typically be the case even during a, uh, a usual uh, winter spring type event. Excuse me, I clearly have something that has floated into my eye. Um, in the sense that the threat of thunderstorms, including um, some that could be capable of producing uh, some, some brief tornadoes, is significantly elevated because there is an unusually high combination of atmospheric instability, vertical wind shear uh, that is from a favorable direction, and uh, rotational motion in the atmosphere uh, that, would, that would induce any updrafts we do see uh, to, to begin to spin, which is required uh, for what's known as a supercell thunderstorm. Yes, supercell is the official scientific term, uh, and it's so named not necessarily because they are uh, particularly extreme or large, although they can be, but it's actually named that way because supercells are, in, in a very distinctive way, self-sustaining uh, in a way that ordinary thunderstorms are not, because by virtue of the fact that they're able to uh, essentially attain a tilted, so a horizontally tilted updraft. Of course, an updraft uh, is, 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 is vertical, it's upward moving air, but what you have is upward moving air that tilts uh, at an axis, and the whole thing uh, begins to rotate along that axis uh, like this pen is. So the whole storm is, is rotating and the updraft is tilted, and why the tilting is important is because it means that the uh, precipitation from the thunderstorm does not fall directly into the updraft. That does and can and does happen with ordinary pop-up thunderstorms and it sort of kills them off. It, 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 once you get the, the, the cool rain-cooled air falling into the updraft, you don't have an updraft for much longer. But if you can get that cool rain-cooled air to fall somewhere else other than the updraft, then the, that updraft can just keep going. In fact, after a certain point, these supercells can, at least sometimes, uh, start becoming a bit self-sufficient uh, in, in, in sort of generating wind, inflow and wind patterns that are favorable for their continued strengthening and propagation. So that's why they're called supercells, to dist distinguish them from more ordinary thunderstorms that kind of just pop up and poof out pretty quickly. So there have been a couple of supercells today so far. Uh, so far, they've all been down in the San Joaquin Valley, although there have been some robust thunderstorms elsewhere with some rotation. In fact, there's a couple now off the coast of the Bay Area. The main area of attention is really along an axis in the, uh, the southern Sacramento and the northern San Joaquin Valley within about plus or minus 50 miles north and south of the I-80 corridor. So that includes Sacramento and Davis over the next three to four hours or so. So I timed this and I'm doing the session a little bit early uh, so that uh, we might be able to see some of these interesting things develop on radar today. Uh, but I wanted to quickly cover other parts of the state. Uh, it's been another wind, uh, you know, windy uh, storm across northern and central California, not nearly as extremely windy as the last one. They're nowhere near the level of power outages uh, or damage, although there are some power outages and there have been a lot of gusts between 40 and 50 miles an hour. That is, of course, much lower than the gusts of 90 plus miles an hour we saw during the big one in February. So there are some localized power outages, but they're probably not going to last very long. Uh, that is the good news. Uh, but the other piece of the story is flooding in central and southern California. Uh, there has been some pretty widespread street, uh, road, and stream flooding along the central coast uh, into about as far east as Santa Barbara and parts of Ventura County. There have been some flash flood warnings in effect down there. Uh, again, this, this probably won't bring as much rain as the last one in February, but then again, things are a lot more saturated, so it doesn't take as much rain to cause flood-related problems more quickly. And there is at least a slight chance of heavier hourly downpours 
But this one, with the thunderstorm activity and the convective activity we're seeing, it's possible that one of these cells, if they align themselves over the wrong canyon at the wrong point in time in Southern California, could produce a significant flash flood or debris flow. The risk is more conditional and isolated than during the early February storm sequence, which was uh, brought really heavy rain almost everywhere. Uh, but nonetheless, the risk is there, especially if a very heavy convective downpour trains over some portion uh, in the particularly inopportune place in Southern California. And that is possible today, tomorrow, and even into early Wednesday in far Southern California. So this atmospheric river, although it's not very strong, it's a weak to moderate one, it's just gonna stay, once again, like the early February system, uh, it's gonna keep continuously flowing over different portions of Southern California for the next 36 to 48 hours. So the storm is not over yet. In fact, it hasn't really arrived yet in some parts of Southern California doesn't look super intense all of the time, but there will be some embedded convection, meaning that there could be some really heavy downpours embedded in that, and that's where the worst flood risk is likely to be. Transverse range is, of course, very effective uh, at squeezing out moisture in these scenarios, and they've already recorded six to eight plus inches of rain. Of course, these are places that are susceptible to double-digit rainfall totals during storms like this, uh, so that is high, but not extremely so yet. The thing is, though, this may continue for a while, so they, those, those totals are going to continue to increase. There has been some notable flooding in Santa Barbara, and once again, the airport in Santa Barbara is closed indefinitely due to significant flooding and inundation of the runways, so you can't fly in or out. Uh, that is now the second or third time that's happened just this winter since the new year. Uh, all right, so let me, let me quickly uh, see what's going on here. Uh, when it comes to, and I'm going to start sharing my screen because that's the ma main purpose of today's conversation. I, I will periodically return to the comments to look at them, but mainly I'm going to be talking while you see other things on screen today. Um, all right, so you're seeing, actually, I was looking at the Storm Prediction Center discussion. Let's first look at the satellite imagery. And what you should be seeing is uh, most of Northern California, uh, the satellite imagery over a fairly broad region. And the offshore, you can see offshore, it's mostly sunny, which is some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. But as soon as you get over land, there's a lot more cloudiness and a lot more interesting things going on. You can see uh, a couple, of, a bunch of interesting things going on, actually. If you follow my cursor, there are these individual convective cells and storms, showers and thunderstorms moving into the Bay Area right now. A more organized plume of showers and thunderstorms extending into the central Sacramento Valley to the southwest to northeast like this. More of these making landfall along the north coast. But look at the San Joaquin and southern Sacramento Valley. It's, it ranges from uh, mostly sunny in the southern part of the valley to partly cloudy up by Sacramento right now. Uh, that, that, those sunny breaks are actually setting the stage for what may end up being some severe thunderstorms imminently in this area because it's allowing uh, the sun to heat the ground and therefore the lower atmosphere, which is helping to destabilize it. So you have warmer air at the surface, warm moist air at the surface in general, or cooler, drier air at higher levels help contribute to instability in the atmosphere, meaning a propensity for updrafts to spontaneously grow once you give them a little kick. Uh, the environment is pretty, uh, is pretty uh, favorable for that at this point. There may end up being too many clouds over the northern Sacramento Valley for much severe weather. There are some sunny breaks, so it's not out of the question. But right now, there's just so many, so many clouds up there uh, that the showers and thunderstorms have remained pretty tame. But ironically, it is in this region here uh, where there, currently it's partly cloudy, where I think there's a higher likelihood of some severe thunderstorms over the next couple of hours. Uh, where there have already been some severe thunderstorms, look down here, down in the southern uh, central San Joaquin Valley by Fresno down to Hanford. This line has since moved into the Sierra Nevada. There's been some severe hail and some uh, very intense downpours at this. There was a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings of that. But look, behind it, there's some clearing. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's another round later behind that. But I still think that this area up here is probably where there's the highest likelihood of some severe thunderstorms imminently. The other interesting thing, if you notice these linear features, these stationary cloud bands, you can see that the flow is progressing through them, but the bands themselves are largely stationary. These bands are essentially parallel with the topography. So you have coastal mountains here, you have coastal mountains here. Of course, here you don't have coastal mountains. That's right over the middle of the Central Valley. So what's interesting is there is flow in the low, strong low-level winds. You're seeing if you're getting those wind gusts to 40 or 50 miles an hour, they're hitting the hill 
uh, the hill, the coastal mountains, if you will, uh, and it's causing, it's forcing uh, air to rise briefly, not significantly, but just a little bit enough to form a band of clouds just uh, downwind of the ridgeline. But then the clouds, uh, then the air, once it loses that, that orographic support, is, is plunging downward a bit, just by maybe a few hundred feet, and that's where there's these clear bands. But because the atmosphere is a little bit stable in this layer right now, it's then bouncing back upward. So what you're actually seeing is uh, the, the coastal mountains down here, where the cursor is, are the first wave. This is the, the Salinas, Val Salinas Valley. Right here, you can see this is sort of the widest gap. Uh, the Santa Lucia is the Big Sur coast. This is uh, essentially a wave pattern, an interference pattern, extending all the way from the Central Coast Mountains, all, getting all the way toward the Sierra foothills. So we see this occasionally, it's, it's, but this is a particularly pronounced version of it. You can see, though, in the last few frames that these are starting to fall apart. That is suggesting the atmosphere is starting to destabilize because these are actually an indication of a stable atmosphere, which is interesting because there's severe thunderstorms right here. There's clouds that signify a stable atmosphere here, and then there's some thunderstorms up in a line over here signifying, again, an unstable atmosphere. So what this is saying is that this atmosphere has some latent instability that's not being realized, that at least in the low levels where these clouds are, it's stable. But as the sun stays out, it's starting to erode that stable layer, and we might start to see things pop up imminently. So here's a broad radar view of Northern California. Uh, as you can see, these are the showers and thunderstorms right now at Bay Area into the northern Sacramento Valley. But right now, there's, it's mostly dry in the southern Sacramento and much of the San Joaquin now that those, here are those severe thunderstorms from earlier that are moving out eastward over the foothills. Uh, but there's this one cell that's approaching uh, just west of Santa Cruz that I want to take a closer look at on the radar. So I'm going to switch over to radar now, uh, or at least the local radar, and that's what you're going to see uh, momentarily. And I'm actually going to move this tab uh, so that it's in a better position for me to toggle back and forth as I speak. So bear with me for just a moment here, uh, and I will have that all set up nicely uh, so that I don't have to have these awkward gaps in a, in a couple seconds. So this will be set up now. All right, there we go. Now I'm where I need to be. Okay, so, oh, no, you're still seeing the wrong radar. I need to switch that. Um, apologies, I, for all the time I spend with technology, I'm, 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 no, uh, I'm no live stream whiz. Okay, uh, where is radar scope? Okay, there we go. Okay, so what you should be seeing on screen now is radar scope, uh, and you are. Good, uh, okay. So the interesting thing here uh, is, oh, now I see why I had that in a separate window. Got it. Okay, never mind. All right, so radar scope. Uh, here is the Bay Area radar site. And as you can see, uh, over the Bay Area, there's showers all around. It's not raining everywhere, but there's some pretty hefty ones uh, at times over the North Bay. And then there are a couple of stronger ones, including some thunderstorms. And I'm going to zoom in on, uh, there's two of interest right now. There's actually one approaching uh, Marin County, Stinson Beach area up here. I'll use the drawing tool. And then there's another one down here uh, approaching this, the, probably going to end up hitting near the San Mateo, Santa Cruz County border. So let me zoom in further on, on each of these. Uh, no cloud to ground lightning with this yet, but it could easily produce it at any moment. I'm going to bring up the, the, the rotational velocity because that there is something interesting going on here. So again, this is, if you look, uh, this is due west of Santa Cruz. So if you look, if you're on Highway 1 between Davenport and Santa Cruz and you look due west right now, you may see a water spout because look at the rotational velocity. Here's a nice little couplet. See that red and that green, and the winds going in opposite directions in, in close proximity to each other? That's a sign uh, that there could be something going on. So this has uh, got a good uh, 20, 30, 30 mile an hour in one direction, uh, and say, uh, uh, let's see how, how high this is getting, around 20 miles an hour in the other direction. So there's about a 50, 55 mile an hour swirling cloud right there. That could well be a water spout. So if you can look west, you might see it. In this environment, which is quite unstable, there is at least a slight chance that when this moves on shore somewhere, it looks like it's going to do so maybe around uh, Pescadero or maybe a bit further north. Uh, there's at least, whoops, hang on, I got the drawing tool. 
there's at least a slight chance that it could come ashore as a brief a brief coastal tornado. So if this continues on its current trajectory, it's going to end up going somewhere like that. This wouldn't be a probably a big event, but we've seen a few of these this year landfalling water spouts that did cause some damage and they came on shore as a tornado. So that one has a pretty strong rotational couplet associated with it. And again, the Weather Service in Monterey has issued a uh, special marine warning for that, so they see that too. Uh, we'll see what happens when it gets close to land. A few of these cells up in the North Bay have gotten special statements regarding the potential for a brief land spout tornado. These would be especially weak uh, tornadoes from uh, essentially strong showers and isolated thunderstorms that are rotating more than usual. I would not be surprised if they issue another one for this one, which is going to come on uh, on shore in a pretty rural area just west of Bolinas in West Marin. So again, the rotational signature isn't quite as strong, although it's a little bit farther from the radar. But you can kind of see it, the last frame right in here. Um, again, some, some thunderstorms possible. It looks like uh, northern northwestern part of Santa Rosa is getting hit by a nice cell, maybe some small hail, torrential downpours, strong gusty winds up there right now. Nothing severe, uh, although some of these, I mean, we'll have to see how these develop. Uh, in this conversation, I'll keep an eye on this one moving into Marin, and then I'll keep an eye on this one moving into San Mateo County. Uh, and we're not even in the main region that I was interested in for severe weather at this point, so uh, there's some, some interesting stuff popping up over the Bay Area, nothing extremely dramatic, but let's do a radar tour. Let's go to the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, you can see here, I'm going to turn off, go back to the single panel for now. You can see that these thunderstorms have weakened as they've moved eastward into the foothills, but this is that line of strong to severe thunderstorms that was earlier uh, between Fresno and Hanford and has since moved east. Uh, that may not be the last round though because the atmosphere is potentially unstable all throughout the valley still. So let's go a bit farther north. Let's go to Sacramento because that's the next, maybe the next most interesting thing. Nothing extremely dramatic here. These showers don't look super crazy, but what I do think might happen is you can you can see in, in this region, there's a bunch of sort of unimpressive showers starting to form in this region, and those have the potential to intensify quickly into strong or even severe thunderstorms with the chance of an isolated tornado. So the atmosphere is, is primed for this, uh, and we'll just have to see what happens. I'll be continuing to watch this radar uh, as as the as the afternoon goes on. So right now, nothing dramatic, but that could change quite quickly. Let's go a bit north. Let's go to Beale Air Force Base, up to the next next northernmost radar site up here. Again, there are some showers right now. Not really much lightning going on, but but uh, this area is sort of under the cloud shield right now. So there are some brief sunny breaks, but I would not be surprised if there are uh, if the sort of a a convergence zone, a North Valley convergence zone develops somewhere along here. That could be a focal point for some severe thunderstorms later. Uh, and anywhere, you know, in this region where there are uh, gaps in the clouds could fill in with some scattered, stronger thunderstorms later. Slight chance of a tornado. But I still think at this point that the greatest likelihood uh, for a tornado today remains uh, somewhere sort of in this, uh, in this vicinity. Um, that's sort, sort of that, that far northern San Joaquin and southern Sacramento Valley. And it looks, it looks like this, this cell east of Sacramento is starting to maybe pick up some steam, so we'll keep an eye on it. But overall, nothing too crazy right now, but that is where I would expect things to pop. Uh, and they will happen pretty quickly. Um, let me just see, even though these aren't very strong reflectivity, let's see if there's anything interesting on the rotational velocity. I'm just curious to see if we can see anything spinning. Uh, not really right now, but it's probably because these aren't, these aren't really strong enough yet. We'll go back to the Bay Area, check in again on those couple things that were going on. Um, again, there's that strong cell up just northwest of Santa Rosa. There's this new one. In fact, this one coming in toward Bolinas has intensified a bit. Let's take a look at the rotational velocity there. And there is a little bit of a couplet uh, so some, some maybe some slightly stronger rotation. That's a pretty strong little cell. So at a minimum, strong gusty winds and maybe some hail uh, along uh, Highway 1 between Bolinas and Point Reyes Station. And maybe, uh, you never know, there could be a water spout or, or a brief coastal tornado spin up there. Let's take a look down here by, by uh, this cell closer to Pescadero. And uh, it's continuing and continuing on its northward path. There's still a couplet, so still could be a water spout there. 
and then all right now let's let's take a break for a moment and go down to Southern California uh, Vandenberg doesn't show too much going on right now in fact most of the central coast this part of the central coast is a pretty quiet period right now so the western half of Santa Barbara County up into uh, San Luis Obispo County that's actually there could be more intense showers and thunderstorms later but right now there's not much to speak of but more interestingly and more problematically is if you go toward uh, further east where there are still flash flood warnings in effect for uh, this would be for uh, the Santa Monica Mountains and these would be for a portion of the transverse ranges in Ventura County uh, not a lot of stuff showing up on the radar right now but partly because the radar beam is blocking the, what's actually falling so not a lot of heavy rain falling at the lower elevations like in the last big storm but there is a lot of orographically enhanced precipitation still falling up above Ojai and up in the mountains up here up in this region and then again you can kind of see this just this this narrow band of orographic precipitation right above the crest of the Santa Monica Mountains that's just sticking it out so this may all pick up again later uh, become more intense later uh, and that is why there's a lot of flash flood warnings and watches, depending on where you are, still in effect. If we go to the Santa Monica, uh, sorry, the, Sa the Santa Ana Mountains radar, there's some light precipitation over Orange County, but nothing too exciting. So probably the most interesting radar right now is actually out of San Francisco, which is a little bit surprising um, because there are these fairly robust rotating cells uh, coming in. Looking again at that one coming into Marin. Still there, still looking pretty, pretty interesting. And then this one down here still is as well. Let's check on Sacramento. So there may be something trying to develop now east of downtown over by Roseville. But nothing too, nothing too big yet at this point. So we'll see. Uh, all right, I want to take a look at a couple other things here. Uh, this just came out right as I was going live, so I didn't get a chance to look at it. But this is the most recent update from the Storm Prediction Center. They're the entity based in Norman, Oklahoma, on the heart of Tornado Alley, responsible for severe convective weather forecast products for the U.S., meaning they deal exclusively with severe thunderstorms and things like tornadoes. There was some potential that they could have issued a severe thunderstorm or tornado watch, Today, it, they just essentially announced that they probably aren't going to do that, although they still think that there is a possibility uh, in this brown region, primarily between about Modesto and Red Bluff. Uh, uh, between about Modesto and Red Bluff, where there could be uh, severe thunderstorms and maybe a, a couple of uh, supercells that produce tornadoes, and this was just issued. So sort of consistent with my line of thinking that the, the likelihood is... Um, maybe slightly decreased from earlier, but still uh, greatly elevated relative to what it would typically be, and this could still pop up over the next few hours. And the lack of, um, on the fact that it's sunny over portions of the valley right now actually makes that more likely, rather than less because of that differential surface heating. So, you know, it's a, one thing that the, that the discussion mentions is that the, uh, the sunny breaks have actually caused the dew points to drop a little bit. So we're getting the warmer air near the surface, but as it's warmed, it's become a little bit less moist. So uh, that is a sort of uh, countervailing uh, conflicting factors, but there still is likely to be at least a couple of pockets where there's enough moisture to get these updrafts organized into rotating supercell-like structures. So where that happens, uh, we will see. I just realized that I did not change uh, the um, I did not change the viewport for all the viewers to that Storms Prediction Center uh, discussion. So let me quickly change that over. It's not super important visually, but it is good to at least see the map of where I was highlighting. Uh, things are most likely to get interesting. And that will be up on the screen momentarily. Okay, now you're now you're seeing it, and essentially uh, that's the brown region uh, of interest the rest of the day uh, that I was mentioning between about Modesto and Red Bluff, approximately in the Central Valley. Although there's a slight chance uh, that things will get 
a little bit spicy elsewhere. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to go back. You'll see, uh, you know what? I'm actually going to leave it on the radar. Uh, so I'm going to bring it back to the radar because that's where the most interesting stuff is right now. And I'm probably going to bring it back to San Francisco because, again, there is some interesting stuff going on offshore with those little, with those little cells. So I'm going to zoom into the point where you can see everything from about here through Santa Rosa. How's that sound? And I'm going to leave that on uh, as I answer some questions. All right, yeah, some comments about uh, trouble in Santa Barbara, nothing extreme, but you know, it is the third or fourth episode this year, so in that sense, significant. And the airport is closed, and it's always significant when a commercial airport is unable to operate due to floodwaters. Um, this seems to be a recurring problem now uh, in Santa Barbara, so that's something to think about. It actually wasn't on the list of the most climate change vulnerable airports in California, uh, most of the Bay Area airports are on that list. San Francisco, of course, it's right on the water and sinking as the bay level is rising. And a similar issue with Oakland International Airport uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, Sacramento Airport, though it is protected substantially by levees, is in the Sacramento River floodplain, theoretically. Uh, but Santa Barbara is the one that's actually been closed by floodwaters repeatedly now. Uh, multiple times just this year and in recent years. So that is worth noting. It looks like this storm did, uh, I don't know if it was the convective activity, but it managed to drop some lower elevation snowfall, not low elevation, but lower, at least down to lake level. Like South Lake Tahoe got a nice uh, three to six inches last night. Not Shouldn't really be big news, but this winter, it's been really hard to get any accumulating snow down to 6,000 feet, so it's nice that they saw it. Uh, Alex mentions uh, that several sailplane pilots are enjoying the gravity wave that I was mentioning earlier, soaring behind the Big Sur Coast Range Mountains. Unpowered gliders at 18,000 feet in between the amazing lenticular clouds. I mean... You know, I'll, I'll bring, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll go back to the satellite in a moment, but you know, there is that sort of interference pattern style uh, gravity wave uh, lenticular pad, cloud pattern. That's, that's what I was mentioning uh, in, the, in the satellite view earlier, and it is pretty striking. Um, we, again, we, we see it from time to time, but this is a particularly widespread and, and pronounced iteration. Uh, a lot of folks mentioning that today has been unexpectedly windy, and you know, it is windy, certainly. There are a lot of gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour, and that's enough to cause some problems, you know. Some uh, branches will come down, there will be some power outages. I mean, the good news is there aren't, we're not seeing the 60, 70, 80 mile an hour gusts that we saw in February, uh, but maybe sort of the, the 40, 50 mile an hour gusts are coming from a bit of a different direction, and so are affecting different people than were most affected in the early February storm. I think that's part of it. Uh, also, some of the heavy, heavy winds are, are associated with this stronger convection. It is mixing 50 to 60 mile an hour winds down to the surface, and in fact, that might be where some of the strongest winds are actually coming from, uh, those thunderstorms uh, or these intense showers as they, as they move through. All right, now let's see else here. Ezra, Ezra Romero asks if you can talk about the potential for water spouts and tornadoes in the Bay Area and North Bay. The odds are low, but not zero. Uh, the odds are highest in the Sacramento Valley, but you know, as I mentioned, there, there is a slight chance of a, of a weak uh, spin-up somewhere. Probably wouldn't be a huge deal. It wouldn't affect a lot of people, but it's, it's possible. There are some cells right now that are capable of it, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, zooming in a couple of them. Uh, I'll, I'm back on the radar that you'll see. Um, you know, this this is a pretty strong one coming in, as I mentioned, just west of Bolinas. So it's a very rural part of West Marin right now. But it will affect, you know, part of that Highway 1 corridor right along here. It's coming in now, and, and there, there's probably some hail and gusty winds here at a minimum. And again, 
could be a brief weak spin up uh, water spout over the water but now as it's moving right over the beach that 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 water spout if it's there would transition to a weak tornado as soon as it hits the sand by definition uh, and then if we go back down to this other one, another sort of feature where there continues to be, you know, actually that, that rotational couplet maybe even has strengthened a little bit down here. It's a little bit broader, I guess, so it's not super tight, but it is there. Uh, and again, uh, this is something that if you're on a different, se very different segment of Highway 1, if you're on Highway 1 down the coast here, uh, you might be able to see this. There might be a water spout that could make, sh make it on shore as a brief tornado. So again, the main risk of real supercell type structures is to the east over the Central Valley, probably more in in this area. But you know, in, in this vicinity along the coast, there is you know isolated water spouts and something that could briefly make it to shore. Uh, the weak tornado is not out of the question, but I think the bigger deal, if if it happens, would be over the Central Valley, given the atmospheric uh, favorability there. Let me hop over to the Sacramento radar and just check that out. I'll go back to the questions in a moment. Still seeing some showers trying to build up, but not really getting any strong reflectivity, nothing building up. By the way, for those wondering, this feature right here, that's the wind farm in the delta. So that's not a very stationary downpour. That's, that's the radar reflecting off of tall windmills. So you can ignore that from a meteorological perspective. It does interfere with the signal in those regions. It's a small area, but it does mean it's difficult to see what's going on there. at least at that low tilt. So actually, here's an interesting exercise. If I tilt the radar view up, that goes away magically because the beam now is, this is where that was before. There's a little bit of clutter, but it's mostly gone because now uh, here the, the radar is located right around here. It's looking south, but the beam is now, uh, look, I'm using a tilt that's at a higher angle, so it's going above. So usually like the lower tilts, but just be aware that that's what that, that's why that's there. Radar Meteorology 101. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's stuff that's trying to get going, uh, but, you know, it's not there yet. But then again, you know, what's going on right along the coast? I mean, there's these stronger cells uh, west of San Rafael and up by Santa Rosa and then this one coming in on San Mateo Coast. So there's still stuff out there and there's plenty of, there's still a few hours of daytime heating for things to get more interesting over this region. So waiting, waiting for things to pop up and fill in there. So just to be clear to everybody, there is no tornado watch in effect. That would be something that would be issued by the Storms Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, and it is there. There is none, and they specifically said they do not plan to uh, with this specific situation. So. There have only been a couple of tornado watches ever issued in California. There have been, however, hundreds of tornado warnings, shorter fused warnings for specific individual tornadoes, uh, short fused warnings issued by individual local weather forecast offices. So say the one in Sacramento or, San, or, or Monterey or Los Angeles. Um, I think the most recent of which were probably issued by the Weather Service in Los Angeles for the actual tornadoes that occurred along the central coast during the last storm. And those were fairly damaging events that had tracks of three to five plus miles, which is unusual for California tornadoes. That suggests that they were not just very brief spin-ups, but that there was a sustained uh, rotation from a mini supercell that kept that tornado going on the ground and causing some damage for multiple miles. Those were EF1 tornadoes that did cause significant damage on the, on the central coast a few weeks back couple weeks back. I'm losing track of time. Anyway, we could see something like that today. We might not. We'll see. Uh, looks like the Weather Service just issued uh, some sort of product, uh, another special weather statement for Central Marin. Uh, let's see what it says about, says about it. I'm getting used to clicking things here. Let's see, uh, strong thunderstorm, central Marin, as expected, wind gusts of 50 to 55 miles an hour, so just yet more wind. Uh, not mentioning uh, land spout potential so much, I don't think there's too much rotation, but that'll be a pretty intense downpour, maybe some small hail, and definitely some gusty winds coming into central Marin uh, momentarily. Let's see if we look at the rotation. There is some 
broad rotation generally, but nothing, uh, probably not supportive of a, of a tornado. Uh, well, this is the Sacramento radar as well. Let's see if we go to San Francisco radar that might be a bit clearer. Uh, okay, um, the San Francisco radar does show a little bit more rotation. So again, you know, you never know uh, what could pop up as this moves sort of generally in this direction. And Miss Sandra Fell will head up toward Nevada. So that's a pretty intense downpour, gusty wind feature there. And then let's look down here again. Um, as I say, as this is moving into Pescadero, it still has that, that, uh, that rotational couplet. So maybe a water spout or something. Um, yeah, right now, honestly, the most interesting cell anywhere actually is this one over Rin County. Um, there's some others that are farther away from the radar, so I wouldn't be too surprised if these back here were doing something interesting, but they're just, they're so far from a radar site that it's difficult to tell. Let me actually pop up to Eureka, see if there's anything interesting on the North Coast. Uh, there are, again, showers and thunderstorms. In fact, that's actually where most of the lightning is right now, is just west of Shelter Cove. Um, so there is, uh, once again, some interesting stuff going on up there, but nothing too dramatic. A um, little bit of rotation here, too. Um, you know, this this cell uh, west of Shelter Cove, you can kind of see that that blob in there. Uh, there's, there's something, uh, again, nothing extremely dramatic, but, you know, there's a lot of rotating showers and isolated thunderstorms right now and in this environment you never know quite which one's going to do something a little bit more dramatic and when okay so maybe this is the first uh the first cell of the afternoon starting to pop up right between davis and winters um we'll see what it does but it definitely has some stronger reflectivity in the last couple frames uh too early to look for any rotation but uh it's 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 something and it's forming in that in that area, that key area that I mentioned earlier, where there is enhanced instability and some some breaks in the clouds. So we'll see what that does. Go down to San Joaquin Valley again. Go further south. Looks like there's another new storm uh, that formed. That looks like a certain it's headed supercell territory on the east side of the the San Joaquin Valley, uh, by uh, just south of Porterville, actually there's a pair of cells. There's one right in Porterville and one to the south. This is east of Highway 99. Whoops, that actually should be a straight line, but that's not what my mouse did. This is, uh, just for perspective, this is I-5. This is Highway 99. So this is all east of the major highways, but there are, of course, still folks who live in, along this axis. Uh, so there's some stronger cells popping up again down there, and maybe a few others... Uh, if you've been to the Lost Hills, uh, feels like an apt name, but the, the some new cells popping up down there on the west side of I-5, and again, you know, this is a, this is the warmest, moistest, most unstable environment. The, the wind shear isn't as good, so the tornado likelihood is lower down here, but the likelihood of some severe thunderstorms is, you know, is reasonably high. Not seeing a lot as we go up. There's some cells trying to develop in the foothills. Uh, but this is probably too high elevation to really see much of a tornado threat. So again, that's mostly over where the air, the air is more clear than not right now. Going back to Bay Area, and then I'm going to look at the questions again. Again, the most dramatic cell, except for that one down by Porterville, is now moving over Central Marin. If I zoom in, that's going to go right over Woodacre. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit for perspective, yeah, I mean it's it's maintained a little bit of a rotational couplet as it goes inland, so it's not super strong, but definitely um, a sign that the atmosphere is uh, convincing even relatively modest thunderstorm cells to ro to spin like a top. Speaking of which, again, this couplet down here actually looks a bit stronger again. So once again, looking west from. Davenport along Highway 1, Santa Cruz County into San Mateo County, right in this vicinity. So this is, you know, uh, this is Highway 1. Um, could be a water spout right around here, and it's still trying to move uh, toward the coast, probably right around Pescadero. So something going on there. And then I'm going to leave it on the
the Sacramento radar for now because then you can kind of see that cell, those cells popping up. Yeah, it looks like there's there is now some stuff going on. Um, some some cells trying to form sort of in this Yolo County zone. Uh, all right, let me look at. I'm going to leave this up for now. I'm going to take my drawing off of it and then uh, we'll look at the comments again. So I've uh, steadily accumulated some some uh, watchers and, and visitors on this uh, on this live stream as, as it's gone on, possibly because it was originally scheduled to start in 15 minutes. So folks think they're early and they've actually been on for 45 minutes, but I'm going to stay on longer, I think, on this one. I'm going to keep it a slightly lower intensity, lower uh, speaking intensity for the later portion of this, but keep keep it live because I, I, I do think at some point things are going to get interesting very quickly uh, in the Central Valley. So I'm going to keep going through the questions for now. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll bring the uh, I'm gonna bring the satellite view back up since folks want to see those standing waves again. There's some other th interesting things, so I'll I'll bring that back up uh, in a moment. All right, uh, Noah asked if there are any relative velocity radar products that are free to the public anymore. Well, the data itself is freely available. I mean, it's it's National Weather Service data, and so all of it is free. But the question is if you can view it easily on freely accessible uh, apps and programs. And the answer is it's a little bit more complicated. I'm pretty sure that the Weather Service has a built-in tool that you can do it, but honestly, it does not work very well. And this has, again, come down to this uh, aggressive lobbying by private companies to prevent the federal government from effectively distributing its information because the view is that the federal government should not be competing with private companies in this space. Uh, I think folks who regularly follow me know how I feel about that, but that is the reason why. So write your senator or congressperson uh, if you think that that is not appropriate. Um, it has nothing to do with what the people in the Weather Service or NOAA, by the way, uh, want, would rather have. I know that there is frustration internally that there are not better ways to disseminate this information, but there, they are, the hands are tied. Uh, and so in the gap, in the void, I do say that the one weather app that I pay for, um, I pay for lots of other subscriptions to be able to speak to broad audiences, but specifically the only weather uh, visualization platform that I have on my phone, for example, is a radar app because of that weakness. And I do use Radar Scope, which is what you're seeing up on the screen right now. Uh, it's just, it's not a very expensive subscription, so it's something that is reasonable if you're interested in the weather, and it is something that I will glance at if I'm about to head out the door, uh, as well as in this context of uh, going through storms uh, sort of remotely with folks. Um, Okay, let's see what else there is. Lots of folks reporting intense showers with sunny breaks in between them. Some folks reporting sunny, just, just the sunny breaks, but I guarantee you there are the intense showers and thunderstorms out there locally that might increase shortly. RB mentions over four and a half inches in Santa Barbara since yesterday. And man, Central Coast, as far as the Central Coast, are just going to have phenomenally high seasonal rainfall totals this year. I mean, the storm is not over down there. They're going to get more, yet more to come and maybe another system to come in a week. We'll see about that. Mary mentions maybe nice wildflowers in, in, in the mountains, central coast this spring. Uh, yes, that, that seems like a plausible hypothesis given how uh, wet things have been and also how not super cold things have been. So it's been wet and mild rather than super snowy. So that, that's, that's, that's a good good guess. Uh, Another question on the the KMAX radar, which is uh, I think that's the. Let me see if that's I forget the. I think KMAX is San Francisco. So while we're talking about it, let me bring up uh, that radar. Um, the question is. There's always two large wedge-shaped bands of interference that are always present off the coast. Is this topographical or some other kind of interference? 
I'm guessing that what you're referring to is probably, whoops, that's, I didn't draw that very well. Uh, probably like this and like, and, and that. So sort of the, these are the wedges. Um, and there's the arc of the wedge. There's another little one actually right here. And there's also another one like it goes right up like this. So essentially, yes, these are these are ra radiating interference from the topography. So here, the radar site is, oh gosh, where is it exactly? So you can kind of see it. Uh, you can kind of tell where it is just based on the, the radial interference. The radar site is right in here. That's Mount Uminum. Uh, actually, I should probably zoom out. Uh, so the radar site is right in here. That's where the KMOX radar is. It's on the it's on the near the crest of the Santa Cruz Mountains. Uh, and yes, essentially what you're seeing is there are some slightly higher peaks in certain directions, and so you see some of that interference like this. Uh, you may notice that if I go to like a higher tilt, just like I did for the windmills, here's the high tilt. It doesn't go away completely, but it's largely attenuated. So there's uh, so you can kind of tilt the radar to see above it to a certain extent, but that's not ideal. So it's a challenge of meteorology in places with complex topography. While I'm back in the radar and looking at it, um, there's some nice uh, intensification of some of these showers coming up into San Mateo County. And once again, you know, this, this rotational couplet, it's still there and it's still pretty, pretty robust, pretty decent chance of a water spout there. And this is going to come up Looks like just on the coast is going to parallel that segment of San Mateo County Coast right along Highway 1. So could get a good view. Don't stop in traffic. Um, up in Marin, again, central Marin, gusty storm. Not seeing cloud to ground lightning, but it could happen with this, that's for sure. Could be some in-cloud lightning, so it is still possible hearing a rumble of thunder or two. I'll look at Sacramento again. Um, still not seeing any of these showers really make too much headway yet. Um, might still just be a waiting game primarily. Um, bringing it down to San Joaquin. Again, we have that maybe supercell structure down by Porterville. But right now, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Uh, I mean, we'll see. Uh, you know, there's never any guarantee. This is the challenge with convective storms anywhere. This is true even if you're trying to forecast a tornado outbreak on the plains or something. Sometimes the ingredients are there and the, the, the storms don't fully come together uh, for very subtle reasons that are only apparent in retrospect. But I'm not ready to say that yet because peak heating is right now and there still are a few more hours where all this could pop up. And we still are seeing these rotating, um, I wouldn't call them supercells, but these rotating showers and thunderstorms uh, off the coast are just making uh, landfall near the coast in the Bay Area. So these are the kinds of things that, you know, are indicative of the fact that the atmosphere is wanting to spin a bit. Uh, also some intensifying showers now, East Bay, hills. We'll see what these do when they go out over the valley. Um, Go back to Sacramento one more time for now, and then see, uh, turn off the dual pane view since it's kind of noisy. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, yeah. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna change the view that everyone's seeing right now and bring up uh, bring up the satellite view because I think there were folks who wanted to talk about that, and there's some interesting things to talk about. You're gonna see something else first. And then I'll switch it over. That's the regional composite radar. Here's the satellite view again. Uh, and once again, as I mentioned, you can still see in those earlier frames this really pronounced region of these wave clouds, these, these uh, orographically induced gravity waves. Uh, they're called gravity waves not because the force of gravity is varying in space, but because the restoring force is gravity. So uh, essentially as it, uh, as the topography lifts the air up, uh, gravity pull, the pull of gravity brings it back down and a little bit overcompensates and so it goes a little bit too low. And then the gravity is the restoring force 
uh, the buoyancy in the other direction, then you see the clouds sort of oscillate up and down and up and down. But, but the primary reason is that gravity is that restoring force, hence they're called gravity waves. But the thing that's interesting is when we started this live stream, these were really pronounced. Uh, we saw this. There's still a pretty pronounced uh, clear slot in the, the sort of the, the Salinas Valley, the Carmel Valley, I guess both maybe. Uh, but notice over the, the Central Valley, this wave pattern is starting to fall apart a bit. It's no longer as distinct. And as we've been talking, it kind of fell apart up here and turned into more cumulus convective clouds. So that maybe is a sign that the atmosphere finally is destabilizing a bit more. What happens if we zoom in, this becomes a little more obvious. There's still hints of it up here. But you can almost see a little bit of a boundary moving across the valley right here, actually, upon zooming in. So maybe this boundary is sort of going to be the catalyst for some more significant cells popping up. You can see those convective cells over Marin and then over moving into the San Mateo coast. Um, the atmosphere actually is starting to look bub bubblier in this region. So there are some signs that things are getting a bit more interesting. If I zoom in more on the slightly further south, you'll see the closer view. Here is that persistent clear slot in, in the valley there on the lee side of the Big Sur Mountains. So you can, you know, this is pretty pronounced. And you can see in the San Joaquin Valley, it's literally su mostly sunny right now. I think actually, this is a true color imagery. That might be what's left of Tulare Lake right there, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or that's one of the big Central Valley cities. I can't quite, I'm, I'm sort of losing track of landmarks. I guess that's Mono Lake, so it's uh, a little bit west, southwest of, anyway. Point is, San Joaquin Valley, it's clearing out, but some more, it's, it's getting uh, more unstable to the north, and then the coast, there's still interesting stuff going on. So I'm gonna bring that back north. I'll leave this up for a moment. Uh, one thing, actually, you know what, I take that back. I'm gonna show you something else. So here's a surface observation map. Uh, and as you can see, this is the reason why there's interest in severe weather in the valley, is that right now we have strong south-southeasterly winds. Here's the, here's the Sacramento International Airport. It's 64 degrees. That's pretty mild. The dew point's 50, which is reasonably high. We, this is what the Storm Prediction Center was mentioning. If it were a couple of degrees higher, we'd probably be seeing significant supercell development already, but it's a little bit low. But still, I mean, that's a pretty, that's a, that's a pretty uh, favorable atmosphere. I mean, 64 degrees. Uh, and then, importantly, also the wind direction is from the south at 26 miles an hour. So there's strong south winds. And you can see that's not isolated. There's lots of places with strong south winds and mild conditions. Again, Marysville, 64 degrees, a slightly lower dew point. Beale Air Force Base, 63 with a dew point of 52. That's right in that severe weather territory that we were talking about earlier. Your mileage may vary. It's a little bit cooler in, in McClellan Field. It's 59, but you know, you're still in the same ballpark, but it's mostly at this point in the 60s in the valley. In fact, it's, it's feeling quite balmy. So we get down towards Stockton. This is along I-5. It's 67. Dew points a little bit lower, uh, but here is in Stockton, 64 again. Dew points, again, a little bit lower, but Modesto, Turlock, I mean, it's, it's a pretty mild day there. 66, 67 degrees. Dew points lower. So what we see sort of again is that right around Sacramento is where these warmer temperatures, these strong winds and slightly higher dew points converge. That's still where I think the highest likelihood of storms will be since we have weaker flow down here where it is somewhat drier, although it is warmer. If we look down by where we did see those supercells earlier, here's Porterville, it's 67 degrees, 47 uh, dew point. So, you know, that, that was clearly enough there. These are, I guess my point is these are pretty mild temperatures for a winter storm day. This is behind the cold front, essentially. Uh, and and it, you know, and it's not that cold. I mean, it's pretty mild. Um, you know, that's so that's part of what's going on with this unusual conditions. As we go to the North Valley, uh, as these appear, it's cooler. So temperatures mainly in the mid to upper 50s. And so that is why I think that there's going to be less of a chance of significant convection. Although again, there are some warmer spots. It's 60 degrees up here. There's probably a pocket in the clouds. Up at Redding, it's 59. Dew points uh, up here are higher, so maybe that's the trade-off. So again, I still think that the sweet spot is probably right, right around uh, the I-80 corridor still, where there's that mix of... And also, we get that air converging in through the delta and that to topographic veering and shifting uh, of the wind as it goes around the topography. So I'll, I'll keep that up. Um, 
I'll do a quick check to see if there's anything interesting from the Storm Prediction Center new at the moment. Um, looking to see if they have, um, this is still that mesoscale discussion from earlier. Uh, I'm gonna quickly check other sources to see if there is, um, looks like some of that, that, that cell in central Marin is now officially producing some lightning, by the way, as I mentioned, it was possible. Uh, and uh, there could be that, uh, that, that cell near Pescadero is indeed a uh, high likelihood of producing a water spout, so that is quite possible. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Jim Cantori just tweeted with a screenshot of the very same satellite view that we were just looking at percolating, dot, dot, dot. So those of you familiar with Jim Cantori on the Weather Channel, uh, that's pretty much the same philosophy. We're just sort of waiting to see what happens. I mean, this is one of those environments where the it's primed and ready to go, and does something trigger it? If it does, it could be pretty dramatic. If it doesn't, then, you know, it, it might not be all that dramatic at this point. Um, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but there are some signs that it's, things are trying to pop. Well, if I had waited until the originally scheduled hour uh, for the session, I would just be starting now, and perhaps that would have been a, a better call, but I was trying to, to beat the, the dramatic, the more dramatic storms uh, to the punch, but I think in this case, maybe that I, I could have uh, put it off for an hour. But anyway, uh, I'm going to stay on for a while because I still think some interesting things are plausible in the coming uh, in the coming hour or so. Um, I'm back. Let's see here. I'm going to go back to some questions, though. I'd like to answer some questions as I brought the radar back up on screen for folks to watch. Uh, for those of you who have just joined, uh, welcome. Uh, I was originally going to start the live session right now, but I did decide to start it early today, just given the conditions that were ongoing. So um, thanks for joining. I'm still on now, of course, so welcome. I don't think you missed too much. Uh, and my plan is to stay on for a while and either leave this live stream up, uh, even if I stop talking for a while at some point, or have a new one later. But I think the best thing to do might just be to leave this live stream up. So I'm going to continue discussing what's going on. So welcome to any newcomers. I'm just going through the questions right now. Amy mentions at 6,000 feet in the Sierras, a strange mix of heavy rain and wet snow with thunder this morning. So clearly a convective environment, clearly and not a super cold environment if you're getting a rain-snow mix in February at 6,000 feet. Ben mentions in Sacramento, blue sky to the west and clouds to the east. That blue sky to the west uh, is actually a, a sign that things uh, are favorable for storms to blow up quickly soon uh, because those sunny breaks are what will facilitate it. No guarantee it's what's going to happen, but that's, you know, what you would need to see right now is some blue skies. So that is what you're seeing. Trekkie, 37 degrees with flurries of wet, sloppy snow. Yeah, that's not cold enough for meaningful accumulation, really. So, again, this hasn't been the best snow accumulating event uh, by any means, but better than some, I suppose. Ezra asks about thoughts on the next storm at the end of the week, into the weekend. Honestly, I haven't thought about it yet, and it does not look huge at this point. So that's that's maybe the, the one sentence summary. All right, 
let's see. Yeah, folks now reporting lightning in West Marin, so that, that sort of validates that. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the Bay Area radar, uh, just because that's usually better to see in Marin. For some, for some reason, radar scope is not suggesting that there was lightning strike, but everyone's saying there was, and it looks like other sources are confirming it. So there was some lightning up in here. Just an indication it doesn't catch everything. Also, this is pretty far from the radar site, but I'm guessing that this cell about to move over Healdsburg is likely producing lightning and maybe some hail and gusty winds too. Could be some rotation up there, although it's too far from the radar really to tell. Um, if I go south, it, whoops, I don't want to draw anymore. If I go south here, um, let's take a look at that cell down by this, really it's a cluster. Okay, so there was just a statement issued by the weather service for this one that we've been talking about. The rotational couplet now is just west of Pescadero and has weakened a little bit, uh, but now there's a new one uh, that looks strong again, another potential little water spout off there. Let's see what the weather service statement is here. Oh, okay, so uh, this statement does say that a uh, land spout is possible. So land spout, again, is a uh, weak, generally weak type of a tornado that does not come from the mesocyclone of a supercell thunderstorm, but instead spins up by some other means. And in this case, it would likely be a water spout that moves ashore uh, as a land spout type tornado. So the statement reads, and you can see it on the screen, strong thunderstorm in southwestern San Mateo County, capable of producing a land spout. Uh, additionally, wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour outside of the land spout zone. So Technically, if that happened, that would be a tornado in San Mateo County. Not particularly likely, but it is possible with this. And again, I think what the statement is referring to is specifically this area of rotation here, which is again just paralleling the coast, and at some point will make it inland. But then also this, this feature uh, over here, and this is probably going to continue northward and make landfall maybe further up the coast, more by Moss Beach or even a bit further north. So that's a land spout possible statement. Again, the Weather Service is opting not to issue a tornado warning because it's unlikely that this event, if it occurred, would be a significantly damaging tornado. That said, you know, strong gusty winds can cause damage regardless of what, how, why, why they occur. So, uh, and get another indication that just the atmosphere wants all of these showers and storms to spin today. This is just a day with a lot of spin in the atmosphere. Uh, and that includes the Bay Area, even though the, the wind shear. Okay, so it does actually look like this area, this area I was highlighting earlier in the conversation is starting to pop off a little bit on the west side of the uh, I-80 corridor. So this is, uh, this is actually in Solano County right now, uh, but there's this cluster of activity this this could this could intensify quickly. It's moving pretty quickly like this, but let's keep an eye on that. Uh, actually, all the way down here toward uh, Brent between Brentwood and Stockton to this stuff. All of this is moving into a very favorable environment for convective intensification. If we zoom out again, as I mentioned earlier, this blob th th these are the windmills. So ignore that stationary blob. But otherwise. Um, I mean that's a that's a that's a stronger cell starting to pop up south of Dixon and Davis. Let's see, is there any preliminary rotation? Where are we here? That's this one. Actually, yes, there is already. Even in this brand new shower that's popped up, a little bit. Whoops. A little bit hard to keep track of. So. They're moving so quickly, it's hard to tell. But even these little, sh I guess the point is even these little showers are showing some early signs of spinning. Uh, alrighty. Let me go back to the questions. Or actually, I'm gonna bring, bring back, uh, the single pane view here. And then leave that up as I 
Discuss some more. Chuck Jones reports Hail, and this is probably from a little, little while ago, but Hail now in West Marin and Forest Knolls. Uh, rain rates at 1.25 inches per hour, so just showing that very heavy rain associated with the convection. So that was clearly a thunderstorm with some hail, heavy downpours, probably some gusty winds. Uh, Mary mentions that thunderstorms make her cringe uh, because of fires, uh, but in this case, there's essentially zero risk of wildfires because, of course, everything, for the most part, is sopping wet, and we're at the peak of vegetation greenness, green up, I should say. Uh, so I think we're, I think we're, that's one thing I would not worry about. A couple folks asking again what radar I'm using. This is the Radar Scope app. What you're seeing is the version of it that I have on my computer. It's also the only app that I've downloaded onto my phone, the weather app. So, for better or worse, I'm a bit of a Radar Scope evangelist. John mentions it's 65 with gusts to 27 miles an hour and briefly sunny in Lodi. Again, that's the sunny breaks that will facilitate the stronger storms imminently across the valley. Uh, a, a timeline of expected thunderstorm activity across the valley. Will this period of instability be expected to last until sunset? Yes, uh, pretty much the severe weather threat in the Central Valley and locally elsewhere will continue at least until the sun sets. It'll probably decline rapidly thereafter, but that's still a few more hours. The sunset's getting a little bit later. It's no longer uh, late December, early January. We're in you know mid to late February, and so the sun is setting after well after 5 p.m., so we got a few more hours at least. And in fact, the, the severe weather threat will probably peak between about now and, and, and 5 p.m. local time. Uh, some sun showers and thunderstorms may continue overnight, but they'd be less likely to be severe storms. And there could even be a few more tomorrow afternoon in the valley, but again, the severe weather parameters, there could be an isolated uh, severe thunderstorm, but the parameter space doesn't look as impressive as today. Mike asks, uh, seems for the second year in a row, we're seeing a lot more convective activity during winter storms. Any links to sea surface temperatures in the mid-Pacific being abnormally warm? I think there probably is, although I also think that the link may be more to the near shore Pacific temperatures, so right off the coast that are warmer than average. That gives some extra juice to the boundary layer of the atmosphere, the lowest le levels of the atmosphere, so more moisture, higher temperatures, uh, more potential buoyancy in the low levels. As I mentioned, pretty much every storm this year since October has been pretty convectively active in California and has brought pretty heavy rainfall, at least uh, in localized bursts and with intense thunderstorms. That's just been the characteristic of the storms this year. I think there is something to that. Nobody at this point uh, in the world that I'm aware of has done any sort of study on severe convective weather and climate change in California because this is a contentious topic even elsewhere where there's more obvious connections potentially. But I think in general, at this point, what we believe is that the, 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 the occurrence of high CAPE days, CAPE being that acronym for Convective Available Potential Energy, an aggregate measure of atmospheric instability and the potential strength of updrafts that would be contained within thunderstorms, essentially increases with warming temperatures almost everywhere. So we see more opportunities for high Cape days in places that already see a lot of really severe thunderstorm activity like the Midwest and other parts of the world. But we also start to see more relatively high Cape days in some of these model predictions in places where we didn't see it so often historically. And that would include places like California in events exactly like this one. So although there's no research on this and I can't point to any, any particularly uh, high confidence scientific findings for this, there is enough reason to believe that we probably will see more days favorable for severe thunderstorms in California in a warming climate. And this kind of day would be pretty reminiscent of what I think those days will look like, where there is a winter storm with cold air aloft, 
where there's some pretty good wind shear and where, frankly, it's just not that cold at the surface right now. Again, it's 60 to 70 degrees in the central and southern parts of the Central Valley right now. Uh, if you added a few more degrees to that, you know, you'd have temperatures of 70 plus in some areas uh, in, you know, with cold air aloft during a winter storm. That is an environment that starts to become closer to what we see in more eastern parts of the continent during severe weather outbreaks in spring. So I tend to think there's some evidence to believe that in a warming climate, we'll both see a higher ceiling on the intensity of thunderstorms in places where they're already common, but also increasingly see more severe thunderstorm events in places and in seasons where it's weird, quote unquote weird. So, you know, places where it's usually too cold for severe thunderstorms in winter, where you get these warmer winter events, storm events than you used to, uh, that might be true in places like the northeastern U.S. and the Great Plains. Some, you know, the, the likelihood of some winter severe thunderstorm outbreaks there might increase, even though you'd normally see them in the spring and summer. In a place like California, you know, we generally don't see very many severe weather outbreaks, but we do occasionally see conditions that are favorable. And when that happens, usually it's in winter into spring. And so often it's temperature and moisture limited, boundary layer buoyancy limited. We actually have plenty of wind shear uh, with some winter storms. We don't really have any atmospheric instability. So, you know, that's me going on on a limb and spitballing a bit, but I do think it's plausible that in a warming climate that places like the Central Valley of California could start to see more severe convective outbreaks. But again, there's no studies specifically to support that. But then again, that's not because studies say that isn't going to happen. It's just because, to my knowledge, nobody has con conducted that a study to ask the question yet. Like so many things that we often hear, the answer is no. The answer is really just that we don't know because no one has the funding to actually ask the question to be quite honest. And in some cases, because it's a difficult question to ask. And I think that's fair in this case. You know, you can't answer this question directly with global climate models. You'd have to combine global climate models with high resolution weather models. Something that we've done, uh, something that we've done uh, in the arc storm uh, scenarios and, and the associated scientific uh, investigations. But, uh, you know, it's something that is not easy to do. And th th there are lots of caveats. The point being, sometimes we, you know, there are plausible things we should probably foresee as being plausible, you know, in a warming climate, even before there is a really strong evidence base uh, in terms of, you know, multiple specific studies that say, you know, X data suggests that Y is true. We also have basic theory and sort of, uh, we also have sort of these broad scale studies that we can point to uh, and, and, and ask the question, okay, well, what is it exactly that prevents a place from like California from seeing more severe weather events? It, you know, what is the actual limiting factor? And is that particular factor expected to increase or decrease uh, in a warming climate? Uh, and the answer is that the limiting factor is usually the buoyancy of the lower levels of the atmosphere, surface-based instability. And that probably will increase, at least episodically, and in fits and starts in a warming climate. And it would look an awful lot like today. Uh, Kat mentions, yes, the North Coast is also getting some of this uh, enhanced activity today. Uh, I, I did do that, a brief northward excursion during the radar tour because there is something interesting going on up there. Uh, question from All Mountain Media. Do I think this is one of the last bigger storms of uh, the season for California or could there be more to come? There absolutely could be more to come. It's only February 19th. Uh, in a year like this one, I'd expect major storm potential to continue at least through the end of March. So you got at least another four, five, six weeks potentially to go. So a lot of places are going to end up well above their seasonal average precipitation, especially in central and southern California. Hopefully the Sierra picks up some additional precipitation because there are some patches that are below average. But at least along this, the central and south coast, slam dunk for a wet year at this point. That's pretty much already happened.
Uh, a question about a comment I've made several times regarding the mechanics for the uh, blue sky to result in stormier uh, weather uh, subsequently. The reason for that is right now, what, what is lacking in the atmosphere is instability, meaning that the, the buoyancy of the lower atmosphere is not quite enough for little disturbances in the atmosphere uh, to become self-sustaining as they shoot upward and create these gigantic cumulonimbus clouds and potentially even form low top supercells as has been the uh, the interest today the reason one way to just really a few ways to increase instability one is you can add uh, heat and moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere or you can add cool dry air at upper levels of the atmosphere because this has to do with the rate of, at which temperature changes with height and also the rate at which moisture changes with height and so you can see how by either adding uh, heat or, or, or heat energy or moisture in the lower levels or by subtracting these things in the upper levels, you can cause that profile to become more unstable overall. In, on a day like today, when you're in a sunny region, it means the sun is hitting the surface, it's heating the ground, the soil, the pavement, whatever the surface is, and it's also heating the lower atmosphere. So it's not adding more moisture, but it is adding uh, more heat to the boundary layer. And so that makes it closer and closer to that destabilization temperature. So today, the convective trigger temperatures in a lot of the Central Valley are about 60 to 64 degrees. A lot of places have just gotten into that territory and are starting to surpass it. So you can imagine if the sun comes out for half an hour and the temperature rises a degree or two relative to being in the shade, that can be all it takes to reach that spontaneous convective trigger temperature, and then it's off to the races. Joshua mentions that the cell of the Russian river is dropping uh, mad hail, which I'm not surprised by. Uh, let's see if we can, yeah, I mean, so the, so the you know, Russian river sort of basin uh, cr crudely is sort of this region here. Uh, this, is, this is probably one of the places with the worst radar coverage uh, in all of California. So it's possible that the cell uh, that's dropping the hail. It could have been this one, uh, just west of Healdsburg, or it could be this one up in Mendocino County. Uh, maybe maybe Eureka has a better view of, of that one. Not yeah. So okay. So slightly better view from Eureka. Uh, so this is actually this is a nice hailstorm. It looks like it might have gone right over Point Arena. But again, this is really far from the radar site. It's difficult to say. So actually, the fact that it's showing anything there suggests that it probably was a pretty intense cell when it moved through. Okay, uh, are you seeing radar? I just want to make sure everybody's seeing what I'm seeing. Yes, you're all still seeing radar. I'll go back to this and then I'll go back to questions in a minute. So let's check check out the radar. Things are picking up uh, actually in the in the Sacramento Valley. So there are more robust showers developing on the west side of the valley right now. Uh, again, nothing crazy intense, but it's kind of just a waiting game. They are starting. It looks like to intensify. Uh, more than they did previously. So let's go back to the Bay Area. Again, the, the strongest cells in all of California right now are in the Bay Area, and this one is now in San Mateo County. So again, that's a pretty, that's a pretty strong little thunderstorm cell. Now over land, uh, San Mateo County, uh, this is west of Woodside. So this is gonna make it, this is gonna shortly be over 280 so don't drive on 280 if you don't want to be stuck in a downpour and potential hailstorm imminently um, and potentially some gusty winds as well let's look at the rotational signatures um, okay um, actually this is a pretty little robust signature so there's a couplet here again strong gusty winds and maybe you know a brief a brief spin up uh, i think this this special weather statement is issued for potential for a land spout i can see why that is offshore this actually, oh, sorry, I didn't draw that very well. So there's a, a, a notable but modest couplet right here. And then there's a much stronger, this is actually, this is this looks very conducive to being a water spout offshore. So again, if you're looking off the coast, now if you're looking southwest from Moss, south from Moss Beach, El Granada, pretty good chance you're gonna see a water spout. So looking south, direct, south, southwest, from there, this is this is where it would be, right in there where that X is. 
That's a pretty strong signature. That's actually the strongest couplet I've seen so far today. So things are getting a little bit interesting out there. As again, as you can see, all this is moving north. This is going to be a pretty, you know, these these showers may evolve, but showers and thunderstorms, they're moving generally north and they're going to go across the central Bay Area. This could affect San Francisco Peninsula short, you know, imminently and the rest of the Bay Area later. So pretty good chance that this one is producing a water spout right now, I would say. Let's see what else there is. Um, another cell up toward, heading up toward West Marin, a little bit farther west than the last one. It's right over the Farallons right now. No crazy rotation, but it's also kind of far from the radar and hard to tell. Let's see what the uh, special weather statement is here. Yep, still the land spout. Land spout's possible. Again, that would be a weak, a weak, a very weak tornado, potentially. Uh, a couple comments about some waves of intense showers down the Big Sur coast. Uh, yeah, you can see that. This, this arc just went inland. This may or may not, so interestingly, this is just upwind of that wave cloud, that clearing in the valley. I wonder if this may disrupt it or if the wave cloud may sort of eat up this, this band as it goes inland. Let's go a bit south again. Let's go back to the San Joaquin Valley and see what that looks like. There's just that soul cell now e well east of Porterville going up into the foothills. Um, a few things now popping up around Bakersfield, so but nothing crazy. Um, again, the most interesting radar for the moment, right in the central Bay Area. And again, look at that look at that reflectivity. I mean, that's a it's an intense little shower uh, slash thunderstorm, and it does have zooming out a little bit. Pretty good little rotational feature. So, you know, if you're if you're between San Mateo and Burlingame, we're about to get hit by this one, and that's going to be so. San Francisco Airport it may have uh, some some delays as this moves over. Not yet, but imminently, in the next 20 minutes. San Francisco Airport's right there in the path of this one. Sometimes you get interesting reports from the control tower. And then, but the stronger rotational signature where there is, I think at this point, you even got a little bit of a hook in the reflectivity, water spout potentially out here. Again, this could come on shore close to Moss Beach. Let's check out the Central Valley. Looks like there's some additional Things popping up. Okay, I think this is the moment where things are starting to get active since there's some heavier showers now developing again the west side of the, 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 the Central Valley. So we're talking sort of west of this, sort of in this region right now where these could, these could intensify quickly. There's some moving through Davis right now, but there's more picking up really between about Stockton and Calusa. So this is going to be the area to watch over the next hour right where we thought things would pop up later. I'm going to go check out a couple other sources. I'll leave the San Francisco radar up while I do that because I think this one is quite interesting right now. I'm going to leave it in dual view mode zoomed in so you can see with that animation. All right, let's see what else folks have mentioned. Joss Edelson reports around Woodland, the photographer friend of, is reporting a wall cloud with uh, significant updrafts. I can't verify that, but uh, let's just take a look at what that might be referring to. Uh, I did mention earlier there was there was that little bit of rotation. Uh, okay, so there is there is um, there's some activity going on. So this this would be west of Woodland uh, in this vicinity. Uh, it doesn't look super impressive on radar, but there is an interesting boundary feature. Uh, there's it looks like there's a bit of a if you notice this aligning right with I think that's 
I505, uh, that connector that goes between I5 and I80, there's a bit of a linear feature uh, here, with a bit of a wind shift in there, so maybe there is something cooking in this vicinity. These storms are moving pretty fast on these strong winds, so depending on when that comment came through, it could have been a while ago. I'm going to bring it back to the San Francisco radar again, although this is starting to pick up. As I say, maybe I should have just started the original time after all. I almost second-guessed myself. Um, yeah, so that hefty cell is moving, and again, through, move through, as I mentioned, San Mateo, right over the air, San Francisco airport. This whole little feature, in fact, it actually looks like there might be a little bit of a semi, semi-organized spin, so I think this whole feature here, there's almost like a little bit of a mes uh, sub-mesoscale feature here. There's almost like a, a boundary here, uh, another boundary lifting northward here, maybe a little bit of, of spin uh, like that. Um, and I think, so this wave, as it moves northward then, uh, could produce some significant weather all across the Bay Area. So stay tuned. This looks like it's intensifying. We'll see what it does. Meantime, all sorts of little pieces, uh, little bits of spin in here right now. Again, one of them is here. It doesn't look super pronounced, but a much stronger one. Again, I think this more likely than not is producing a water spout. I would be surprised if there weren't a water spout right here about to be west of Half Moon Bay. Probably, it looks like it's going to hit the coast just south of, just near El Granada. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Bill mentions thunder rolling in Santa Rosa, so clearly there is some lightning going on up there. But let me pull up a few other sources again, see what's going on. I'm gonna look at the reports that are rolling in. Yeah, just continuing to scan and see what things look like. Yeah, so there's some folks uh, doing some meteorological analysis on the fly, and um, just in the last 10 minutes or so, it looks like that the uh, the shot there was a shallow inversion in the atmosphere. So a brief a shallow layer in the atmosphere near the surface where temperatures were increasing uh, with height, which is uh, not favorable for convection, but that has mixed out as temperatures have risen. Uh, and now we're sort of on track for the, that intense, that rapid intensification of thunderstorms in the Sacramento Valley. Uh, so that I think is why it's taken a bit longer and why we saw all those cloud streets, those parallel lines of lenticulars in a somewhat stable environment and why they have since gone away is that things are destabilizing. Okay, so that's probably all I'm going to glean from that source. Uh, just continuing to look around for some more. All right, and then let's take a look at the uh, I'll take a look at satellite again. I'm going to share that with everybody. I just need to go and change the view briefly. Okay, so looking at satellite again. And as I mentioned, there still are some of these cloud streets to the south, but to the north, right around Sacramento, they have gone away. The atmosphere is destabilized, that inversion is mixed out, and we're now seeing the development of these showers and thunderstorms right where we thought they would. Here is that stronger wave of the storms moving across the central Bay Area as we speak. 
that interesting activity up by Santa Rosa. These are this is probably the big hailer that was uh, the hailstorm that was reported up by uh, Mendocino Watershed that that is way up in Mendoc uh, sorry the Russian River Watershed by this is coming on shore near Point Arena. Lots of bubbly looking clouds and you can see that there is a broader area of clearing right upwind of where the bubbliest clouds are. This is favorable. Let's check in on the surface conditions again. It continues to get a bit warmer uh, in, in the Sacramento Valley, I mean, even in the Bay Area. Like right now, downtown San Francisco, 63 degrees. That is mild. I mean, that is, that is genuinely mild. San Jose, 63, 64. Again, San Mateo, 63. These are not cold temperatures. 67 degrees along I-5, 68 near Turlock. These are quite mild conditions right now. Uh, let's see if there's any update from the SPC? No? Okay. Uh, then, in that case, I'm going to bring the radar back on so people can watch, continue to see that because there is some stuff going on right now in the Bay Area in particular. And I'm going to zoom in again. Uh, although now it looks like there's some interesting stuff going on up in Napa County. I'll go up to that in a moment. Okay, so no statements currently in effect, although I wouldn't be surprised if a few are issued. This whole arc of strengthening showers and thunderstorms now extends all the way from the offshore west of San Mateo County all the way to the East Bay Hills over by Dublin, uh, 580 interchange there. This whole thing, I think, actually has some potential to either maintain its strength or strengthen as it sweeps northward and maybe develops a little bit further east, maybe Livermore might get in on this uh, shortly too, depending on how far east it develops. Um, looking for a little little bits of rotation in here. Um, yeah, that rotational couplet mentioned earlier, it's coming in on the coast right around here, so that would be where something interesting might happen. The rotation, uh, broader rotation not capable of really supporting a spin-up now right over San Mateo, but of course an intense shower, maybe some lightning, gusty winds. Overall, this is looking like a strengthening convective element. So there is, you know, there is some pretty robust stuff out there. Once again, that cell is going to move into West Marin, showing a bit of rotation too. But let's go to Sacramento, because again, that's still area of maybe most interest today potentially and this does show strengthening convection so since we've been on this radar screen has gotten a lot more active again these are the windmills ignore that um, but otherwise these look real so there are these linear convective bands sort of by Davis Dixon Vacaville Woodland kind of axis a more linear convective. This is not likely to produce any kind of tornadoes, but this could produce some flood issues since that's going to train over the same areas repeatedly. So there could be some flash flood concerns up there as that intensifies. But but generally speaking, uh, I'm going to bring the whole the whole screen here. It's less distracting. Uh, generally speaking, I think now this this sort of region is where I would be most interested in the tornado threat the rest of the afternoon. Um, and it's sunny down here right now, and it's, you know, now we see these showers popping up up here. One of the reasons for this, by the way, is we have, so the Cartina Strait is right here. Uh, Low-level winds, essentially, when they're coming from the southwest, they get funneled through the Cartina Strait here. But now, you know, the topography of the valley, so the, co the coastal mountains are here, the foothills are here, and they extend, you know, they extend down like this. There's also foothills west of west down here. So essentially, what happens is the there's this low point in the topography right here, where you start to get winds that come in. And on a day like today, the large scale winds around uh, at, at upper levels are from uh, sort of the, the the southwest. So let me show what the wind shear looks like. Zoom out a little bit. At upper levels of the atmosphere, you have wind that's sort of going like this right now. So that's, you know, the strong winds at the top of the cloud layer. But at the lower levels, you have winds that are kind of going like this. So you have 
almost 90 degree difference in the wind direction. So in the low levels, winds are like that. In the upper levels, you have winds like this. So you have, you can see how essentially you have you have the winds that are they're turning with height, right? Uh, and so what you get are winds that are turning clockwise with height. Because if you start out here, if you start out going like this, as you go up, the winds start to turn. As you go up and up and up and up and up and up, and it's a, and you start to see like a corkscrew effect in a, in, a, in that direction. So when I was showing you the hodographs yesterday, or the hodographs, depending on how you pronounce it, that is what that curvature is. It's saying that at lower levels, the winds are like this, but as you imagine this curve ascending in the atmosphere, it turns more and more and more and more and more and more like this. And so what you get is warm, moist air coming in underneath here, and you have cooler, drier air coming in like this. And the fact that there's this rotation, of course, that's what can help get you to get uh, rotation in these individual uh, supercell-like storms, but it also means that you tend to tilt the updraft. So if you have an upward moving column of air within this, it's going to sort of bend over like this. And this is why, you know, if you if you go storm chasing on the Great Plains, what you'll see is, is you'll see a, a supercell that sort of looks like this, and it'll be tilted over, and this is in the vertical direction. So uh, by the way, I'm just using the screen as a drawing template. Uh, it's not It's not in a latitude longitude sense. If this is your storm, this is your base, uh, and this is sort of your, your cirrus anvil up here, you have, you have a storm that is rotating like this. It's spinning in a vertical sense, uh, but it's also tilted along an axis like this so that the, in, in this case, the updraft might be here, but the downdraft where the rain is falling is down here, and so they're not in the same place. If the updraft is here, downdraft is here, that warm moist air, that buoyant air keeps getting pumped into this thing, uh, but it's falling down in a different place. So fundamentally, that's what we're seeing trying to happen in this region. Now, now I'm back to drawing on the map uh, in this region here right now, where these individual, don't look like big storms, these individual cells are trying to rotate in that way. Go back to the Bay Area, see what's going on there. Again, pretty robust clusters of showers and thunderstorms. Nothing obviously severe right now, but you know, these do look like they're semi-organized and maybe intensifying a bit. Uh, let's see if anything's going on now. Whoops, jumped to the wrong region. Uh, Just need to get this on. There we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's intensifying. This band now is producing cloud to ground lightning. Looks like there was a lightning strike in the middle of San Francisco Bay. That actually might have been on the San Mateo Bridge. That might have literally hit the San Mateo Bridge. You see it there, and there's probably a pylon there, or the or the high tension power lines that go adjacent to the bridge. That would be my guess. Anyway, it's generating some lightning now. So these are officially thunderstorms moving through the Bay Area. Uh. All right, so the cell west of Winters is looking a little bit interesting. Let's go back up to Sacramento. Okay, these are we're, we're get, these are these are popping up now. So now there's two pieces of interest. There's this one just west of Winters. There's this other one just northeast of Davis, and there's this weird linear feature down here. I don't know what that's going to do, but let's look at the rotational. Uh, let's look at the rotational data. See if there's anything going on. Let's get rid of my drawing. So we're looking at right around in this vicinity, just west of Winters. Still a little bit too premature. There's also a lot of noise, unfortunately, on this radar, so it's a little hard to see. But definitely some intensification. I'll bring that back. All right, so what I think I might do, because things are just getting interesting now, and it would be a little bit of a shame to go away, is I may take a brief break, meaning I may go get another cup of water uh, and something to eat briefly, but I'm going to leave the stream up. Uh, I'm not going to end the stream, and then I will be back very shortly. So uh, 
I, I will continue to be narrating folks through. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is I'm gonna leave the radar up live, uh, the radar you're seeing right now, uh, because you can see things in the Bay Area and the Central Valley as they develop. But I am literally just a minute or two away. Go, go get a, a, a little bit more water to drink, stand up for a moment, uh, and then I'll come back since I think I'm gonna stay on for a while still as this continues to evolve because I still think there's a decent chance that we see some supercells and that could maybe a tornado or two pop up. Uh, let's just say if I, if I wasn't seeing the kind of development right now near Sacramento that I was seeing, I might be logging off, but uh, we are starting to see it, so I'm going to stay on. So uh, forgive me, uh, but I'm going to go take a brief break, but I'm going to leave the stream open and I will be back very shortly uh, with more live narration. But you, the radar will stay up, and I'll be here in just a moment. You may see an ad play briefly as I stand up, but uh, it's not the end of the stream. Still here, you can stay logged in, and I will be back momentarily.
All right, everyone, I am back at the computer. You're still watching Live Radar up out of Sacramento, but now I need to take a look and see what has evolved over the last 10 minutes or so. Let's see here. All right, so I'll do another bit of a radar tour. We're in the Sacramento area now, so let's stick here for the moment. Uh, again, some intensifying showers. Not seeing a lot of lightning yet with these ones. We'll see if we do, but now there is, as I mentioned, a special weather statement for this whole line going up north. So in fact, let's go north. Let's go to Beale, Air Force Base radar site. All right, so this is looking pretty, as they say, pretty spicy. Um, okay, so there's really two things going on here. One is this clear linear band. Uh, it's actually strongest in the north, so it is producing lightning up here right now, less to the south. That could start at any moment. There's a clear uh, linear convective feature right now uh, of a line of thunderstorms. Let's bring up the uh, the velocity data, so wind velocity. So clearly, in this case, there are there is a there's a boundary of some sort along here where there's some winds coming in. This is a feature that it has at least a slight chance of some severe thunderstorm activity. In fact, the highest chance of severe thunderstorm activity is probably at the southern end of the line, so down here, and then possibly also with some of this activity in this area. Uh, but then this piece, so this whole feature here, uh, the, the risk of flooding and flash flooding is probably going to be increasing. So it's sort of in this in this vicinity, uh, or actually I should probably redraw that box. It pretty pretty much that's probably what the statement is for. In this box, uh, approximately the risk of flooding is going to be increasing. These are these are some persistent showers and thunderstorms with heavy rainfall, and those are going to stay uh, roughly in this region. That includes Chico, uh, Williams on the west side of the valley on I-5, so really mostly just east of I-5, except also including I-5 as it bends east towards Sacramento. This whole area, high likelihood of showers and thunderstorms, maybe some flooding. Uh, and at the southern end of the line, maybe some severe weather, so some, some uh, brief tornadic spin-ups potentially sort of in this area at the southern end of the line. That that would be what I'd be looking at. But actually, let's just look at what the statement says. Special weather statement, not of severe warning, but is strong, again, strong thunderstorm, no surprise there. Uh, wind gust of 40 miles an hour. Uh, and uh, torrential rainfall leading to flooding and uh, brief funnel clouds. So. Not at this, so this is not necessarily a supercell. Uh, this is a more of a linear convective feature, but it can still bring significant weather impacts. So some some big time rain and thunderstorms. So I would say the biggest risk from this is flooding, and maybe some flash flooding. So let's go back south again, Sacramento. See what's going on. Uh, Again, this this boundary now with, with, with that that's going to bring potential flood risk. It is extending farther south now, uh, maybe all the way into far northwestern Yolo County. So this whole uh, this may fill in and bring a risk of some some additional flooding here also at the southern end of the line. We'll see what that does. Um, more isolated uh, cells popping up in this region. And again, this is where there's a higher likelihood of some severe weather, including a potentially an isolated tornado. Not seeing any insanely crazy uh, rotational features right now in any of this, but again, th th these are intensifying. This is the region of maximum instability. This is right when we thought the conditions would start to peak, and it looks like they are starting to. Uh, let's go to the Bay Area because right now, again, some of the strongest storms right now are, are Central Bay Area. So these are focusing, these are affecting a lot of people. Uh, again, this is moving through Burlingame, San Bruno right now. Thunderstorms with strong gusty winds, maybe a bit of hail, and definitely some torrential downpours. 
seeing that um, not seeing as much rotational stuff right now so the water spout threat spin up land spout threat right now is probably lower than it was a little while ago but could pop back up and again these are pretty robust thunderstorms moving across the central bay area still uh, again we can't really see the radar it's too far from the radar but way out here moving into the coast of Mendocino County from Point Arena northward these are probably very strong storms could be producing a water spout or some hail so these are some pretty high impact weather moving into western Mendocino County uh, maybe I'll jump up to Eureka radar see if there's anything there and yeah, it's 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 too far north of San Francisco and too far south of Eureka we don't really have a radar on the coast that can see this well so not a lot to say about it right now uh, but going back to Beale, this is northern. This is the the Northern Valley again. Now there's some lightning down by Maxwell, so that line is producing more uh, more lightning by Williams. And then we go down to Sacramento, where we just were. Things are continuing to pop up. We'll see what happens right around Davis. All right, let's look at some other sources. I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave the single panel so it's less cluttered up on the screen for a bit. Everybody can see what's going on. I'm going to go back to some questions. Welcome to folks who have returned. I just needed some. I wouldn't even say caffeine. I just needed some actual uh, calories and some more fluids. So more uh, reflections on that radar blob right here, by the way. Again, I'll draw on it right now as I leave it up, up on the screen. That is not a storm. That is radar reflecting off of the windmills uh, at the Delta wind farm there. So ignore this. I'll leave that up on the screen. Um, so just to be clear uh, for folks, uh, I, met, I, I made some comments about climate change and severe convective weather earlier. When I say that there's not research specifically looking at severe convective weather and climate change in California, I am specifically talking about severe thunderstorms and associated phenomena like tornadoes or large hail. Uh, so that is a completely separate question from ordinary winter storms or atmospheric rivers. Essentially, it's a different question than the kinds of storms we see most of the time. And there has been research on that. And there we do know that climate change will significantly strengthen atmospheric rivers and the kinds of extreme precipitation events that we sometimes see associated with them and that we've seen a lot of recently. So there, there is research, and it's pretty, it, it's pretty conclusive that climate change will make those kinds of storms worse. But severe convective weather specifically refers to these sorts of uh, isolated individual severe thunderstorm cells like we're starting to see develop right now. And these are different than the big multi-thousand mile wide storms you see over the Pacific. A supercell thunderstorm is rarely more than 100 miles wide, uh, and sometimes they're as small as you know, 10 or 20 miles across. Uh, so, you know, these are much smaller features in the atmosphere and the question of how they may respond to climate change. It's not just a question, as in the case of atmospheric rivers, is that if we have more moisture in the atmosphere, which we definitely will under the right conditions of the warming climate, you get more intense atmospheric rivers and more extreme precipitation. Pretty much something else would have to change in the opposite direction for that not to be true. So that's a very well understood physical uh, process. But when it comes to severe thunderstorms, there's a lot of different ingredients that matter. You need to know the, the, the level of instability in the atmosphere. You need to know the level of wind shear in the atmosphere. And you need to know whether or not wind shear and instability are coinciding. So, you know, if, if the instability increased a lot on the days when the wind shear was low, or the wind shear increased a lot on the day when the instability was low, it, it, you might actually see a decrease in severe thunderstorms. But if they increase together at the same time, or at least if one of them increased and the other stayed the same, then you probably would see more severe thunderstorm activity in a given place. So you can kind of see how the sequencing matters. And all we really know at this point 
is that broadly in most places in the world that the amount of surface-based instability will probably increase in a warming climate. So all else being equal, and it may not be, so that's why you know it's hard to make a statement, there probably will be more opportunities for severe thunderstorms should conditions otherwise be favorable. Now that latter statement is doing a lot of work. Should otherwise conditions otherwise be favorable, well, will they be favorable more or less often than they were? We don't know, but we do have some sense that the amount of atmospheric instability, generally speaking, and the number of days where there is high atmospheric instability will probably increase even in California in a warming climate and perhaps especially in the Central Valley because it is the place that most resembles the places where severe thunderstorms are much more common. As I mentioned in the last conversation, the Central Valley in some ways geographically can act like a mini Great Plains because you do have uh, often, especially in the northern half of the valley, north of the delta, you have winds that go from south to north during days like this at the surface, but winds that come out of the southwest or even the west at higher elevations. So you have that wind shear, it's sort of built in as a function of the topography. Uh, and then uh, you also have uh, the, the fact that the valley itself is a bit of a bowl, so it sort of traps low-level humidity, it stays more humid, and it also becomes warmer uh, than the coastal regions because, of course, you, you can get, you know, if the sun is high enough in the sky on a day like today, as it is right outside your window right now if you're in the Central Valley, it's pretty, it's pretty mild, right? It's like 65, 70 degrees in some places. Uh, and that's partly facilitated because you're far enough away from the water that on a day like today, you know, when there's a strong sun, there's no real cold air involved, you get warm enough for it. So anyway, the point is, severe convective weather is a different story than atmospheric weather. It's a completely different part of the meteorological spectrum that we don't often talk about in California, but occasionally it enters the conversation, and today is one of those days where it absolutely is. Okay, so it sounds like there's some new warnings going out, so I'm going to pop over the radar and take a look where that might be. Okay, so that northern end of that uh, convective line in the, in the northern Sacramento Valley now has a severe thunderstorm warning. Let's take a look at it. Uh, this is pretty far north. This is the very northern end of the line, uh, a fairly rural part of the valley. This is actually not even really in the valley. This is more like uh, in the foothills. So this is like north of Megali and Paradise. So um, let's see what's... And also, it's probably worse than it looks up in here uh, because the radar, again, gets attenuated. This is a problem in the Mountain West. You can't always see everything. There's a lot of lightning strikes, though. So let's see what the warning actually says. Um, interesting. Uh, so this has a... Uh, a severe thunderstorm with 60 mile an hour wind gusts and quarter-sized tail. Uh, torrential rain uh, and also even potentially a brief tornado. So this is a sort of intermediate warning between a severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado warning. Uh, let's see if we can see any rotation here. Uh, there are, okay, there are some areas of rotation up here. It's not super obvious, but there's sort of a pocket of rotation up here and then another broader rotation here. Uh, so I would actually say this this is probably what they're referring to most likely uh, this region right here potential tornado um, now let's see if I can get any reference points I honestly this is a very rural part of the county I don't really think there's anybody there there aren't too many people living up there so this one's not likely to cause big problems the closest reference is mineral which is not exactly a bastion of civilization so I mean, again, this is this is going to cross over some pretty rural areas in the upper foothills, so and that may attenuate the tornado potential. Nonetheless, a severe thunderstorm warning, damaging winds, gusty gusty winds, larger hail, and torrential flash flooding rain. So, first severe thunderstorm of the day in Northern California. We had one earlier down in the San Joaquin Valley, but things are heating up. Uh, if we go south again, this whole line, showers and thunderstorms, locally severe, and then another arc on the east side uh, these actually these may the storms themselves may be attenuating the radar beam now so let's go further south Sacramento I'm gonna undraw 
Okay, so uh, again, nothing crazy yet near Sacramento, but it's the atmosphere is, is definitely trying to do some interesting things. Lots of showers around, some occasional thunderstorms. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the Bay Area, see what's going on there. Again, strong showers and thunderstorms moving across central Bay Area. Little little bits of rotation in there, but nothing nothing dramatic. But let's see what this this particular uh, statement says. Uh, for uh, again, strong thunderstorm, wind gusts of uh, fifty to fifty miles an hour, fifty to fifty to fifty five. Sorry. Um, not a lot of hail with this. Not an, uh, no no immediate indication of a water spout or tornado anywhere, but. Gusty winds, torrential downpours, lightning. Not exactly your run of the mill Monday in the Bay Area. Also not the first time that's happened this winter. Uh, but let's uh, let's bring it over to one screen again for, for leaving it. Um, it is possible that this cluster, as it moves, lifts northeastward into the Central Valley, could be a catalyst for some more severe weather up there, particularly on the eastern flank. Well, let's just put it this way. If this is lifting northward, like this, uh, as things develop sort of along this axis, this could be a focal point for some additional severe weather as it does so. Again, if we had a better radar, we'd probably be talking more about what's going into Mendocino County right now, but it, this is about as good of a view as we're gonna get. It's probably pretty intense up there. Whoops. Jump to the wrong place again. Back to Sacramento. Yeah, I'm gonna let the dog in the room. Give me a second here. All right, uh, go back to some questions, see what's going on. So I'm going to go look, uh, check a couple other sources, see if there's anything else interesting. Let's see here. Pretty much everything we've just been uh, just been covering, so that's roughly in line with expectations for now. Again, you know, there's still the possibility that we're seeing about as much as we're going to see. It's also possible that things quickly escalate quickly. Repeating my words, so you can tell it's been a long session already. But in the Central Valley, that would be the really right around the Sacramento region would be the area of most potential this evening. Really, I should say late this afternoon. All right. Well, I know several folks saying they want to see the dog. Luna, unfortunately, did not want to stay in the room, so she's she's gone somewhere else, away from the, the home studio. She just didn't like the fact that the door was closed. So now that the door is not fully closed, uh, mission accomplished, I guess. Yeah, folks commenting that the sky is looking kind of gnarly near Elk Grove and east of Sacramento up by Roseville, and it's probably these these little cells popping up now. Again, right now they don't look super crazy on radar, but um, 
they are there and they are sort of popping up quickly out of nowhere. So they could develop into something more substantial. Let's check on that cell up at the north end of the valley. Again, it's mostly headed up toward out of radar zone, so it's hard to see it, uh, but uh, some more intense things coming into your Gridley, Butte City. Some stuff filling in now over uh, Southern Lake County and Napa County too. Um, could be some significant thunderstorm activity there potentially at some point later this afternoon. Let's check out the San Joaquin again, see if anything has blown up. It's pretty quiet down there except for a few lone cells. There's one that's tried to develop, again, this is uh, just the lower foothills just north of Clovis. It tried to get, really get going there and then it kind of petered out a bit as it went over the higher, higher elevations. A few, a few little cells here. A couple more things trying to develop down by Bakersfield, but again, nothing too crazy. Let's take a look at LA just briefly because they have there are ongoing flash flood warnings down there. Um, one thing you can kind of see is that there are, okay, so there are some renewed convective showers moving in near Carpinteria, uh, Ventura. Uh, so, and again, I think the radar site, the radar beam is being blocked a bit, so if we go... Vandenberg, um, yeah, there's some showers the radar isn't capturing, essentially. So there's still flash flood warnings in effect for most of Ventura County and then the the, the um, Santa Monica Mountains. More rain to come. In fact, they may be leaving them up because it's going to start raining heavily again sooner rather than later. So why take them down right now? Uh, all right, back in the Bay Area where there is, once again, some of the juiciest cells of the day continue to be. Central Bay Area, and let's, let's take a look, closer look at this one, right over San Bruno. Uh, so this is like on the western end of the runway at SFO. So that's, this is SFO. So it's literally right at the ed, at western end of the runways. Um, no remarkable rotation right now, but there is just some general vague broad rotation. Looks like a nice little cell still lifting northward. Uh, Central Bay Area, let's see here. Something moving through Fairfield right now. If we go back to Sacramento, might be able to see that a bit better. Yeah, this, at this point, you know, it's still unclear whether whether it's, it's gonna escalate, you know, significantly beyond this or whether this is what we're gonna see. Um, so time time will tell. And uh, the peak window really, as I was mentioning, is right now for the next couple hours. go take a look through a few more uh, information sources. I'll glance at the Weather West comments section. Lots of folks talking about uh, lots of folks talking about some significant runoff, high creeks, but no really severe flooding, which is again, good, uh, and relatively close to what we would expect to see with this event. There could be a, an elevation in the flood risk later tonight into tomorrow in Southern California as these, uh, as these convective lines keep continue to, uh, to move through places that are already really saturated. So that is a possibility, but right now it's manageable. That could change. Right now the biggest flood threat is actually that line, that convective line at the north end of the Sacramento Valley.
Yeah, I mean, there is, you know, there's this, there, there are these individual cells that are, they're, they're stronger than they were earlier. Right now, there's one just north of Woodland. There's one about to, just north of Fairfield, about to move through Vacaville and Winters in the Central Valley. Part of the reason why it's hard to, you know, I, I would uh, sign off and then come back on if something interesting happened, but the problem is these things are going to pop up so quickly if they do in fact pop up that it's going, you know, it's, I'd have to be continuously looking at it anyway, so might as well do it live while I'm sitting here with folks. Yep, Ed mentions... Uh, Looks like a handful of flights are in a hold pattern at SFO. I'm not surprised by that at all. In fact, they're probably already uh, being allowed to land again now-ish, I would imagine, or they will be momentarily because that, if you, again, if I zoom all the way in, that's SFO uh, right here. So it was uh, under the gun recently, but now it's... Uh, it's clearing out, so that makes sense, and I'm guessing those folks will be able to land. Not nearly as long of a hold as some other recent events. People were stuck for quite a while. This is the Bay Area radar again. Heavy showers, central Bay Area right now. And Back to Sacramento. Again, a stronger sell up now by Gridley. Um, that line of heavy rain up in the North Valley with embedded lightning. Um, what I am seeing right now is that a lot of these, these, these features, you can kind of tell if you zoom out a bit, but a lot of these are a little bit more linear. These aren't really super cell mode. You can kind of see these lines of convection like this. Um, you can still get some severe thunderstorms embedded in that, but that's not super favorable for uh, isolated supercellular development thunderstorms that might produce tornadoes. But that's still why down in this region is where um, the least linear the features appear to be is where something might still spin up. So we'll see. Again, there's that cell down by Fairfield. I'm not sure this is updated in a few minutes, so I'm gonna continue to look around. A few channel updates. Uh, you know, as, as, as those of you who have been watching consistently know, uh, I've trended almost exclusively towards live streams as opposed to more uh, heavily produced recorded videos. Partly that is simply a matter of I don't have the time or bandwidth to do nicely recorded videos. And so with live streams, what I'm able to do is, uh, you know, talk to people in real time and then uh, just put a, an intro and an entry uh, pane, an exit pane up on YouTube and just edit out the, uh, the, the awkward 30 seconds at the beginning when I'm trying to figure out if the connection is good enough. Uh, that makes it manageable. But also, you know, I've really gravitated toward these live, these live sessions because people seem to uh, like them, and they can serve as de facto press conferences. I know there's a lot of journalists that, that, that join some of these. Uh, and, you know, it also is an opportunity for me to be um, connecting directly with folks. Um, it's hard to be more accessible than this. All you gotta do is put a comment in the chat, and I will read it. But uh, I think these live sessions are, are, are going quite well. Uh, and really, this is what I will probably continue to do for most uh, most of the videos on this channel. I, I may still occasionally do a few uh, pre-recorded, uh, more uh, professionally edited videos, if you will, uh, on, on longer term topics related to climate change um, and some other things. But generally speaking, I'm, you know, let's do it live. Why not? But I think this is an engaging way of connecting with people. Um, they are archived, by the way. So those of you who ever miss one, uh, you can go back and view them. Uh, I don't delete them. I've only deleted like one or two where there were such terrible tech problems that it 
would nobody would in their right mind would want to re rewatch it. Uh, but all the other ones are archived permanently on the channel. So that is something that you'll be able to refer back to as well. Uh, and uh, there, sh the, the, uh, there should be an option to automatically generate transcripts as well. So I know these are often long, but that should be a way to uh, quickly get content out of them too. One thing I've, that I found interesting is that the viewership for my live uh, radar satellite tour type live streams uh, during these episodic uh, significant weather events are a lot better attended uh, for whatever reason than some of the arguably uh, more substantive, uh, deep, deeper conversations about longer term changes, uh, which is an interesting observation. Uh, I'm going to try and get folks to join more regularly uh, during those climate change focused ones that are not necessarily uh, giving a live radar view or tour of a storm that's hitting uh, right now, but uh, is really thinking more about the longer term and the broader scale of things. I still tend to talk, even in those sessions, about real-time events broadly in the world and in California, but it's a little bit less literally up to the moment. Let's zoom in on your house on the radar app uh, to see what's going on. Uh, so I think my goal uh, this year will be for folks to uh, to to uh, participate in those sessions as much as they do uh, in the the weather focus sessions. Although you know, I personally enjoy both of them, and it is fun to be able to go through the radar and share it with folks in the storm. You know, and 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 I'm glad that so far, you know, most of these events, maybe the, with the exception of early February. Uh, event in, in Southern California where there was genuinely dangerous flooding across a broad area. Uh, you know, these have been more, say, interesting than scary. That's not universally true, you know, but generally speaking, we haven't seen really widespread catastrophic events. You know, had, had I been doing these live streams during some of California's recent fire seasons, there probably would have been some pretty uh, rough moments for folks seeing the imagery as it comes in. So, you know, I, I do want to be mindful of that too. I know not everybody wants to see everything up to the moment as it comes in, but you know, that, that is sort of the goal here is to be pretty honest about what's going on in the world. So moving forward, you know, there, there probably will be future events, whether they're wildfire episodes or extreme storms that are uh, a little more on the, the urgent public safety side of the messaging. And then there are others that are a little more gee whizzy. This is an interesting weather event. Let's take a look at the meteorology. Today is probably a little bit closer to that latter, but there's an element of the former too. And don't let your guard down with the flooding in Southern California. Uh, but just a reminder for folks that sometimes I start these sessions earlier than planned. Sometimes that's because the weather is interesting like it was today. Sometimes it's frankly just because I make a mistake uh, because I'm exhausted. But either way, if you uh, sign up or subscribe on YouTube, uh, you will be able to be notified the moment that I go live. So there won't be any guesswork. Uh, I do try to schedule these in, as far in advance as possible, but sometimes the weather gets in the way. Sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes Comcast Xfinity gets in the way, which by the way, they did agree that they're going to call me the next time they intentionally shut down service in the neighborhood to fix problems, which there sure seem to have been a lot of uh, deferred maintenance in the neighborhood because once I now have the, the, the public visibility that has drawn them to actually start dealing with it, they are finding like that there are like dozens of things wrong with the network locally, which is pretty funny. So I'm glad they're dealing with it, but in the process of fixing things, they've been taking down the entire network for hours at a time with, uh, without much notice. So I have asked them to give me the notice so that for these sessions and for live television interviews, I don't have to guess. So hopefully that works, and hopefully the long-term solution is that uh, we don't have these problems any longer. All right, so let me go look at the radar again. A um, bit of a unsolicited monologue, but I have been uh, not looking so closely. 
Uh, let's see here. So uh, back in Sacramento, there's that cell near, north of Vacaville, which is looking a little bit interesting. Otherwise, you know, fairly benign looking showers at this point. Uh, that severe thunderstorm warning for the far north end of the valley continues. Uh, looks like there's some intensification of the line just north of Butte City. Uh, coming into Oroville, pretty strong cell here. Let's see what the rotational velocity looks like. Okay, uh, okay, so these are the first stronger rotational signatures of the day in the Central Valley, actually, while I was busy mumbling on. And these are a little bit more populated areas. Okay, so there is number one on the left here. This is, actually, it's strengthening. So this, I would not be surprised if this gets a tornado warning pretty soon. This is heading, looks like, toward Durham, and maybe even south side of Chico. So there, there are definitely folks up there. Secondarily, this doesn't look, well, actually, no, I say that. There's another couplet. Uh, this is imminently, this is like right over south Oroville right now, uh, moving into Oroville. So again, no warnings on this yet. I would not be surprised at these, if, especially at this western cell that's heading uh, between Durham and Chico. Uh, this this is looking this this well that escalated quickly as I said if it was going to do it it was going to happen fast and this did. So let's take a closer look. I'm zooming way in times uh, to the to the very high noise level. But the point is even at this very high noise level, I mean look look, look in this last frame I'm going to freeze it so you can see. Uh, I need to advance it forward manually. Okay, so I need to go back one. Okay, so that's starting to be a pretty strong rotational couplet. So let's look at the wind speeds here. So the wind max is 25 outbound. 25. So this is 50 to 60, no, it looks like 50 to 60 miles an hour. I think it's yeah, so that so this is a respectable couplet. National Weather Service has better tools than I do to assess this, but I would not be too surprised if this gets a warning on it soon. Uh, and potentially this one also. Uh, again, it's moving into Oroville right now. So actually, let me see. Well, I'll have this up on screen. I'm going to leave this up and see uh, whether people are reporting anything interesting, since I know there's a lot of folks on the ground. Uh, let's see here. All right, well, no news out about it yet, but that might change quickly. Um, especially, again, I think this, this western cell has the most potential. This is the one that's probably going to go through the Chico area. So that is a possibility. Uh, I'm just scanning, make sure there's nothing else that's come out of nowhere somewhere further down the line. Keeping an eye on this cell that's blowing up just north of I-80, going to go through winters. Keeping an eye on that for now. We'll see what happens. Uh, take a look at the Bay Area quickly, since folks are reporting big time thunder in Oakland. And yep, there's the bolt. There's the cloud to ground bolt. You can pinpoint it to. Uh, Cloud to ground bolt somewhere between Emeryville and Piedmont. So, whoops. Again, I keep doing that, jumping around. Back to San Francisco. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to one for simplicity. Again, these are some pretty, you know, pretty robust thunderstorms moving across the Central Bay Area. Will affect the evening commute for folks who are at work. Looks like a decent cell is about to move through east side of Napa. Just might just miss each, miss uh, downtown Napa to the east. Uh, still some pretty good cells offshore, so this is not over yet. Let's take a look down quickly San Joaquin Valley before we go back up north. Um, again, just some isolated stuff, nothing really of note. Right now, it's all all the real the real shows up north. Um, so here's Sacramento radar. 
gonna slowly zoom in again let's see this this stuff about to blow through winters let's see if there's any rotation on that hmm nothing right now but but it is strengthening so let's let's keep an eye on it more interesting though is what's going on further north as I mentioned these two cells uh, that both have decent rotation one right near Oroville between Palermo and Oroville right here and then this other one over that's about to move through pretty much this looks like it's going to move south side of Chico uh, so right now it's it's right it's right here these probably look like the most structurally and these are strengthening so with every radar return this is strengthening so again this one is moving through Oroville right now probably getting some big time reports of some torrential rain and maybe some larger hail so at this point I think this this one is very likely to be, get at least a severe thunderstorm warning on it if not something else we'll see what this one does as it goes through Chico um, I'm gonna go north, see if the the, uh, the Beale radar is showing us anything more interesting on these. Actually, okay, so this this Oroville cell just went over the the Beale radar, so it's difficult to get. So look at look in this interest on the right side of your screen. Look right here. Look at that sort of that that that, that wind swinging around as it goes literally right over the radar site. That's uh that's kind of interesting. So the black hole is literally just the the zone that the radar can't see because it's too close. Doesn't mean there's an actual black hole in Oroville, but um, uh, you can actually see how see how this is swinging around to the east. That suggests that there is pretty strong rotation in that cell. And then we have this one out here. Um, I don't know if that's okay. That's it's hard to know if this is noise. It looks a little bit suspicious. It might be noise, but. Even though the radar, this is an example of something, even though the radar site is closer to these cells, it's actually too close. So I might go back down uh, to, to Sacramento to get a better view. Okay, so right now the cells of the moment are both, are these ones. One about to head through Chica, one currently going through Oroville. Let's see if there are any interesting reports from folks. David in Chico on Weather West reports the most intense rain I have ever seen in Chico. So um, there we go, that one. Um, let's see. Let's look at the comments here. A couple of questions uh, for, for some newcomers, and yes, uh, all of the office hours are, are recorded and archived. As I mentioned, it's only uh, ones that have like major technical difficulties that I don't bother archiving. Everything else has been and will be archived. So you've got that. Margaret in, in Oroville reports heavy thunder and wind with that, with that cell. Now also hail. Lots of folks reporting very ominous skies in and near Oroville and Chico, as you would expect uh, from the cells that are moving through right now. Chico, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oroville, the worst of it is moving through right now and will get better shortly. But it looks pretty intense. And, you know, it, while not imminently likely, you know, there is rotation, broad rotation in both of these cells conceivably could lead to a, a, a brief spin up. Okay, so the Weather Service just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for that cell going through Oroville, as I was talking about it. Uh, okay, so, um, and as I mentioned, this, ha this, this is technically it's a severe thunderstorm warning, but it has a tornado possible. So again, this is sort of an intermediate warning between severe thunderstorm and tornado. Hail, inch diameter hail, 60 mile an hour winds, and possibly a tornado. Even though there's not one that's necessarily imminent, it could form with little to no notice. 
This actually includes Paradise and Oroville, so this is going up into the high, in, into the foothills a bit. This is just about to lift out of the valley. I would expect that it will weaken as it does so, but right now it is potentially capable of producing a tornado just near Oroville. So this is the kind of activity that we were talking about earlier. You know how I mentioned that we weren't seeing too many individual discrete supercell-like structures? Well, that changed. Here is what here's a little mini supercell, and this one is sort of trying to become mini supercell. And notice how even though they're embedded in some broader features, it's not part of a nice linear band in either case. It's not like that. These are more isolated cells, and that is usually, in any context, the kind of uh, trailing edge storm that would be the most likely to produce a tornado in any outbreak is often uh, at the southern end of these segments of these more isolated cells, like we've seen this one going through near Oroville. So this is now probably moved on past Oroville now, whereas this one is probably peaking in Chico right now. This one looks a little bit less impressive, which is probably why there isn't yet a severe thunderstorm warning out for Chico, because it doesn't look quite as intense. But still, very heavy rain and lightning possible, and some hail. All right, so uh, back to for the areas farther south. This, the, here's that, here's that activity near Winters. It, did, it hasn't really increased too much in intensity uh, as it lifts northward, but instead, let's look at this. This is getting closer to Sacramento now, although it's still north of town. This is south of Yuba City. Uh, this this little feature is trying to st st strengthen up a bit. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Now this is getting really confusing because these radar returns, again, here's the wind farm. But now there's also a real shower developing right over it, so hard to tell exactly what's going on there. I guess we'll wait for it to move further on. Uh, there's also a few isolated showers trying to develop down here now, closer to Modesto. Nothing extraordinary right now, but the question is, will these intensify? Because the environment is favorable for intensification. We will see. Right now, it's, it's, it's areas farther north that are, that are getting the potentially severe weather, but that could change momentarily. Okay, back in the Bay Area, still interesting stuff going on. Uh, there's a new special marine warning for a potential water spout. Again, with a new, the new cluster of cells offshore, that's coming in now. Also, not no warning for it, but actually this one looks suspicious too. Another one coming in near Pescadero, that too is going to move in over the Bay Area. And again, you know, these are some pretty intense showers and thunderstorms moving across central Bay Area. No real rotation in there right now, but just good old heavy rain and lightning gusty winds. Uh, there's this cell in Napa County, which is sort of looking a little bit interesting. Again, it's not part of a longer line. It's kind of isolated. Uh, it's far from the radar here. Let's see if I can see it better on the Sacramento radar. I wasn't really paying much attention to it. Um, well, it also doesn't look so interesting there. It's hard to tell, honestly. Some of these are a little bit ambiguous. Let's go back up to Oroville, see what's going on. Um, still a pretty strong rotational signature on this. Um, you know, it, it, it could, it, I could, couldn't rule out a tornado in there. Again, this is now moving up toward the north. This is probably going to miss Paradise, but it's going to be more uh, between Deadwood and Berry Creek kind of area. Uh, and again, uh, looking at this cell moving through Chico right now, there is also some rotation here, you know, it, there's no warning out right now, but it, it's not inconceivable there could be a brief spin up. Certainly heavy rain and some hail and some lightning in Chico area. Let's see, I'm gonna see, if I'm gonna go back, check some more sources, see what's going on. OK, 
Okay, nothing too uh, exciting in that. It's hard to know where to go for some of that. Um, let's see here. So we're gonna lose the radar signatures on these shortly, but again, it's probably pretty intense in Chico right now because this is moving right over, right, right over downtown. So uh, street flooding, you know, some hail, strong gusty winds. So there are still again two technically two different severe thunderstorm warnings, each with a tornado possible tag. Still waiting to see if we get something if we get more stuff popping up down here. Honestly, this is where I thought the most likely region would be. So far, a lot of the activity has been up here, but we'll see. Sometimes it's hard to know. So this is this little feature here that's maybe trying to develop a little bit of structure. We'll see. Let's go south again, San Joaquin Valley. Again, some thunderstorms down by the southeast end, but otherwise it's, it's mostly sunny in most of the uh, San Joaquin right now. If we go to the Bay Area, we still see... Okay, and well, once again, that one that I mentioned that didn't have a warning on it, now it has a special marine warning again for potential water spouts. Um, and here's another special weather, weather statement over land. So uh, again, now San Mateo County got, got another statement that a weak uh, land spout tornado is possible again uh, from this cell. If you want to see why, I'll zoom in again. And actually, this this does look pretty significant. So right along the coast, you know, there there could be a water spout or a brief coastal tornado out of this. This is north of just north of Pescadero along Highway One. So this actually looks more more substantial than earlier. That's a pretty strong rotational couplet. For those who are just joining, uh, the left is just a traditional radar reflectivity where the intensity signifies uh, the intensity of precipitation, but the right is velocity where the reds are winds blowing in one direction and the greens are the winds blowing in the other direction. So when you have a, a, a tight couplet as it's known where there's red and green uh, close to each other like this, that suggests that there is uh, that there is a rotation of, of this feature uh, at the scale of the of the cell. So just over the course of a couple of miles, that means that there is a pot, you know, this, this is indicative of the signature of a potential water spout embedded somewhere at the, at, at the joint, the, the joining of that couplet in the middle. And if it moves over land, that would be a weak tornado. So, um, that, you know, that, this actually looks like one of the strongest rotational couplets of the whole day. So that there very well could be a water spout or a weak tornado along the San Mateo County coast right now. Zoom in on that again. I mean, that's that's a pretty intense little cell. Look at that reflectivity up at you know, 64 to 65 decibels. That's that's not nothing for California coast. And again, that couple it is. You know, we'll see what it does. It'd be funny if the only real confirmed uh, tornado was along the San Mateo coast in all of this. All right, let's go back to Sacramento radar, see what's going on. Okay, there's now a tornado warning. This is the first tornado warning of the day, officially from the Weather Service. This is for the one, this is for a tornado that would be going through Berry Creek. So that's, this is the tornado, if it, if it exists, is somewhere in here. There's officially a tornado warning right now. Let's see what it says. As a radar indicated, so uh, I don't think it's been confirmed on the ground, but there is a higher likelihood, uh, plus quarter sized hail. So that's a significant severe thunderstorm. So pretty much this is what we thought we might see today and now we're seeing it. Here's a tornado worn supercell uh, in the lower foothills of the Northeastern Sacramento Valley. And this is near Berry, the tornado in this case would be near Berry Creek. Trying to see if there's any 
imagery. See if there's further updates from this. Just trying to take a look. a bit of a different radar view to, to check this out. So there's actually a couple of areas of, of rotation maybe embedded within a lot of this, but Just trying to toggle. Yeah, it's a little easier to see. Again, if there is a tornado, it's it's uh, between Berry Creek and Big Bend. So this is pretty uh, some pretty hilly terrain up there. This is where there's been some terrible wildfires in recent years. Man, Butte County just has gotten hit by just about everything in recent years. I gotta say. Now, also, uh, now the Chico storm is also now severe warned, although severe thunderstorm warned. Let's see what that says. So as I mentioned, things escalated. Yeah, so the, the Chico storm is severe thunderstorm, one inch hail, 60 mile an hour winds, and tornado possible there too. So the higher likelihood of a tornado, as I mentioned earlier, if just from the radar, is this one on the right. But then there's also the slightly lesser chance of this storm just exiting Chico. So now it's gonna be going up into the more remote foothills. So there's that little feature down by Wheatland that I, we'd been watching earlier, and that one is sort of holding together better than maybe some of the other ones have. So uh, this is one to watch in the next few minutes. It's, it is making its way a bit farther south. Still nothing crazy across the southern Sacramento Valley, but it might wait till the very last, very last minute. Who knows? Let's go back to the Bay Area since there was also that potential water spout in San Mateo County coast. I mean, so if it was a water spout, it would have moved inland as a tornado. Uh, and there is still a pretty good little couplet right here. So who knows? Maybe a tornado just crossed Highway 1 in San Mateo County. Wouldn't be a big one, wouldn't be a strong one. But, you know, again, that's not common. Okay, gotta go back up to Sacramento. I'm gonna leave it on the Sacramento radar so we can watch. This is clearly the most dangerous weather right now is up here by Berry Creek and Chico uh, where there is a tornado, there are multiple severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings in effect. Uh, and I'm gonna leave this up while I look at comments and look elsewhere again. Checking Weather West for some additional reports. So if there was a tornado or there is a tornado up here, I would expect to see some reports of it because this is, there are a fair number of people who are up there. So uh, we'll see. It's not the most classic tornado signature I've ever seen, but it's enough that the Weather Service has issued a warning. And you know, I could definitely see something here. Um, although I do, I would expect it to spin down as it goes up higher into the mountains. So the thing I'm gonna do is actually gonna zoom out and leave this open. I'm going to take take it to a single panel so it's easier to tell what's going on. I'm going to leave it with this view while I take a look at some of the questions.
I'm impressed we've maintained between four and 500 uh, live viewers or so almost this entire stream, which has now gone on for almost three hours. So some of you are just as much of a weather geek as I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm, let's let's take a take a quick break from the radar. I'm gonna share satellite imagery just to see how that's changed. I need to share the. Sorry, I'm sharing the wrong screen right now. This is that surface obs map again, but what I actually want to show is satellite imagery. All right, so you see how these linear features, they pretty much went away. And that means that the atmosphere finally did destabilize. And look what's happening in its place. None of these cumulus clouds right here, this is the, the, the far southern Sacramento and the northern San Joaquin Valley. None of these are that impressive yet, but look, it's turned from stratiform stable clouds to unstable cumulus field. That's uh, you call it agitated Q, uh, agitated cumulus field. These are those big severe thunderstorms producing the warnings up by up in Butte County. Here's the big thunderstorms moving through the Central Bay Area. Here's that cell that's potentially producing a water spout in the San Mateo Coast, and all that activity across Mendocino County it looks gnarly, but we can't see it on radar, so I don't have a lot to talk about unless somebody tells me. But this region is filling in with cumulus clouds, and although the radar still doesn't look that impressive, I don't know, this might pop off in the next hour. I mean, that, that this is probably the hour it's going to happen, if it's going to happen. But uh, signs are still favorable for it to do so. So I'm going to leave that satellite up for a little bit. Uh, take a look. Uh, see what other folks are saying. Not seeing too much, so I'll go back. I'll probably go back to radar. Share that again. There's still that tornado warning, although I think at this point a tornado is somewhat less likely than it was earlier. The storm has since moved through Chico, so it's calming down. Secondary cell is moving through Berry Creek, so it's probably still quite stormy there. Uh, but this is probably going to fall apart. I'm guessing this warning will be uh, defused shortly, although there's still some stormy weather up there. Stronger line of, of showers and maybe thunderstorms developing. All right, so this blew up pretty quickly right over... Uh, uh, Granite Bay, so this is essentially just about to move over Lake Folsom, Folsom Lake. Um, this, again, nothing too crazy with the velocity signature. Maybe some weak rotation, but nothing all that notable. But again, just tonight, just the notion that everything is trying to spin. It's just a question of whether it gets the opportunity to really get going or not. I'll have to watch this little piece as it comes out of the uh, out of the Cartina Strait area into the valley into a more favorable environment. We'll see what that whether that pops into something more interesting. And that agitated cumulus field I mentioned over the San Joaquin is is producing a few showers, 
Uh, all right, actually, uh, let's go back to the San Francisco. Something interesting is going on. Okay, so now this is different than what we've seen so far today. There is officially a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the uh, San Mateo County, part of San Mateo County, including Redwood City and San Mateo. Uh, okay, uh, that is a pretty strong rotational signature. It's not large, but it's strong. Uh, you see that? So that may have been a water spout. It may have even moved inland as a brief tornado. There's now a severe thunderstorm warning in effect from the Weather Service in Monterey. What does it say? Tornado possible. So 60 mile an hour winds and a possible tornado. That is includes San Mateo, San Carlos, Redwood City, Woodside. So technically uh, just west of Menlo Park and Stanford. Again, this would not be a large tornado, but a small tornado, an isolated tornado, is possible. And we can pinpoint exactly where it would be from the radar. We, if there is a tornado, which this severe thunderstorm warning from the Weather Service in Monterey suggests there could be, it would be right here, right now. It would be in this circle, which means it's roughly on a trajectory to sort of go through here. So. Uh, the west side of Redwood City and maybe east east of downtown San Mateo. That's sort of where this is headed. I don't know if this is producing something. We'll probably know if it does because there's a ton of people on the path with a lot of eyes on it, but that's a pretty impressive little couplet from that cell there. And not to be outdone, there's yet more offshore, more of these coming in still, so these could potentially produce water spouts or brief tornadoes too. But right now, I mean, this is kind of all eyes on that. Man, that's interesting. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and leave it there for a moment. Look at the comments. Let's see. Looking at the comments here, uh, Joyce mentions a very heavy rain, four four inches per hour rainfall rate in the hills east of Napa. That is, hopefully, it was brief. And that's a that's a heck of a lot of water. Yeah, folks mentioning that the timestamp on my radar app is an hour ahead. That is because I am on Mountain Time, uh, where I'm joining you live from. So it is the correct time in a different time zone. So uh, Pacific Time, obviously, you just subtract one hour and get the right. But I promise you, everything is, in fact, live. This is, in fact, happening right now, as it always is during a live stream. These are not pre-recorded. That would be pretty difficult. Um, so maybe losing a little bit of its rotational signature, but you know, it's still a little robust cell. Um, we'll probably know if anything dropped down out of it later on, but it is fading a bit in intensity. All right, let's go Central Valley again. Yeah, so once again, there's that cell up between Auburn and Roseville. Um, not much rotation with that. But uh, convection really filling in, in in this region now. So we'll see what happens with that. It's close to the radar site, so it's a little hard to tell sometimes. Uh, technically still a tornado warning in effect for that cell up by Berry Creek and Plumas County. Sorry, not Plumas County. I believe that's in Butte County, but um, it, I don't. I think there's probably not much chance of one at this point. I think if it happened, it probably already happened. 
just looking for other signatures. This is probably that cell on the eastern Napa Hills that folks were talking about, the heavy rainfall there. I'll bring it back to San Francisco. Still that severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Um, it has, I do think it's weakened a bit, but again, there are new there are new rotating cells back off the coast, so might not be the last one of the day. Yeah, so this this line could eventually also end up dropping some pretty heavy rain in the Santa Cruz Mountains as it, if it, as it comes through. It's a little bit oriented further north, but eventually this is all going to kind of swing through, you know, this way. So eventually there's going to be some lines that, that drop some more heavy rain in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Some new cells going up, uh, Santa Clara Hills, uh, Santa Clara Hills. Um, again, the system is it's really trying to get some things going, but some of these are a little bit more linear. So these, these, see these more linear bands of convection. These are not super favorable for supercells or anything like that. Notice how this one that was severe one is quite isolated. It's just one, one little blob. Um, Go back to Sacramento, see what else we can see. While we're sort of in a little bit of a waiting mode for the next one, just a reminder that uh, folks who, who are really into this stuff, you should subscribe so that you get notified when I do these. Uh, they, I do try and plan them, but sometimes best laid plans, uh, things either get delayed, start early, or happen at the last minute. So that's uh, something I would recommend. And uh, folks have been asking occasionally uh, which social media networks I'm active on in general. Obviously, YouTube, you're here, so you probably know that already. But uh, most of you probably know me from Twitter, of course, now known as X for some reason that I'll never understand. Uh, but I have tried to get spun up on as many as possible. The problem is right now it is very difficult to be active on multiple large networks to a high degree. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. Cross-posting is very difficult. In fact, right now, the only real way to do it is manually. There aren't really good tools. I even tried writing some software. It the, Essentially, the platforms have made it really difficult to be interoperative, so you pretty much just have to manually copy and paste things. There's probably somebody out there, a much better coder than I am, who has a solution, but the reality is, um, right now, I'm still primarily on uh, Twitter X as a tech-centric, YouTube for video-centric, of course, we're here now. My own Weather West blog, weatherwest.com, is uh, the place where I can have the most uh, editorial control, if you will. Uh, that I've, I've operated that California weather and climate blog since mid-2000s, so the heyday of blogging there. Uh, check that out. And then also, uh, I am present uh, on Blue Sky and on Threads uh, and on Mastodon, although on Mastodon, that is one place where I'm set up to auto-retweet stuff from Twitter X, and often those auto-retweets get a little bit garbled, so unfortunately, that's the best I can do right now. Trying to scale up more on Blue Sky, where I'm weather.west, um, and I believe I'm also weather.west, on threads. 
um, I had to create an Instagram account to, to, to be present on threads. And so um, I now have one of those, uh, but that's different content. I have committed to only posting cloud photos uh, on, on threads, excuse me, cloud photos on Instagram uh, and some science on threads. So if you want to see clouds, uh, that would be Instagram. You want to see uh, the primary weather and climate discussions are unfolding on Twitter and Blue Sky. Uh, and there's a smattering of other things elsewhere. Uh, but um, again, I'm really trying to focus on YouTube and the Weather West blog these days because I think between those two things, a very tech-centric and a very video-centric platform, still waiting to see where the rapid-fire text platforms end up. But So right now, I'm sort of inefficiently distributed across uh, many of them. All right, let me see what's going on with the radar. Uh, right now, uh, something, this cell has intensified a bit as it's about to move through Auburn. Uh, weak, very weak rotation, but nothing nothing to write home about. Um, but you know, that'll be a burst of heavy rain, maybe some lightning in Auburn coming through. Um, really for me, the question is, I think that technically there's still a tornado warning up by Berry Creek and there could be something going on up there in the foothills, who knows? But that's that's moving on. I think the real question at this point is when this cluster moves through this this moves through in this direction, is there stuff that develops in this region uh, on the eastern side of it? That's kind of the remaining opportunity for a significant tornadic spin up. I think in the next hour or so, will it happen? I don't know. It could, uh, but we'll just have to see. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Well, actually, I'm going to go to San Francisco, take a look at that cell in San Mateo. You know, it's managed to maintain itself. It's about to, it's it's small, it's isolated, but it's pretty intense looking. It's going through San Carlos right now, about to head out over, over, over the bay. Still some intense cells offshore. Folks have been reporting, you know, again, that activity up in Mendocino County that we can't see on the radar. But it look, given that we can see some things from here, it's probably pretty intense if it's noticeable at all from this distance. Let's check out Beale, Far North Valley. Not a lot going on up there. There's just too many clouds up further north. I think there's not enough instability. Here's that, you know, the storms. Uh, let's let's go to a higher tilt, as someone suggested, see if we can see tilt four, maybe. Okay, so this is, this is what happens if we go to a higher radar tilt. You can see above the mountains to a certain extent. Uh, it's a bit of a discontinuous. This is still a pretty strong little cell moving up into the into the mountains now. This is up into the Sierra. This is above the foothills, arguably. So, probably some thunder snow between Quincy and Chester out of this. That's what I I, I would uh, I would offer that. It's a pretty high likelihood. Let's go back down to Sacramento. Um, Kind of a linear feature again, as I mentioned. See this this linear convective band has sort of formed. So not really a supercell, but heavy downpours, maybe some lightning, and gusty winds. Um, st still think that the main likelihood of anything interesting, meaning anything potentially tornadic at this point, pops up. It is most likely to be in this sort of area. So we'll see. Even though that's the area where it is the least interesting right now, that's sometimes the trade-off. The more sun, late afternoon sun, late February is is can be enough. See if there are any uh, updates from folks who are reporting from the ground.
Just looking around to see what folks are saying about what they're seeing. hear any barking in the background that's not Luna that's the uh, that's the neighbor dog yes yeah, so this fell apart a bit as it, as it went into the bay so not that's probably less of an issue um, but this big blob of rain, I don't know, this is not the most favorable looking blob for severe weather. It's more just, just some moderate to heavy downpours. But again, it's this stuff, these isolated showers that could... So I'm sticking on pretty much to see what happens with those isolated showers and whether they do anything interesting. We shall see. It looks like that storm up in Butte County, it kind of re-strengthened again. Let's see if there's another rotational. Yeah, I mean, it still has a decent, decent rotation up there. It shifted eastward. Auburn getting hit by a nice downpour right now. Yeah, Joyce, uh, sorry, Noah mentions that some of the wave clouds from earlier had more of a ro mountain rotor look than lenticular. You can actually get lenticular clouds from ro mountain rotor type oscillatory movements. They're, they're different than other kinds of lenticular clouds. They're more like low level uh, stratiform features uh, rather than high level stratiform features, but um, they're not mutually exclusive. Uh, sometimes you can get rotor behavior that causes lenticular clouds. Um, it kind of depends uh, how rounded they were. And, um, they sort of exist along a spectrum, if you will. Just keeping an eye on what folks are saying now. So yeah, that, that cell near Auburn keeps intensifying. It's now got some lightning associated with it. Again, it doesn't look severe right now, but it is a nice little thunderstorm. Uh, I am more interested in this stuff down by Elk Grove, actually. They don't look very impressive on radar, but Again, it's right in that area where there's the best environmental parameters left at this point. Again, don't be alarmed by the wind farm in the Delta. But, I, you know, I think that there is a, there's, a, there's a decent chance that it's going to uh, 
continue into the evening here. A little bit past sunset, although I think once the sun goes down, you'll lose most of that instability. This line heading up I-80 in the west slope of the Sierra is probably going to cause some travel issues, and there could be, uh, you know, up north of uh, Colfax, uh, further upslope between, probably as you get up towards Alta and Truckee, it could be some thunder snow out of this, so that's always fun, but not if you're driving on I-80. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to get much more than this today. Um, the parameter space was pretty good, but uh, you know the, the, the dew points may have been just a little bit too low uh, for more widespread severe thunderstorms. So we'll see. Uh, there's another about another hour or so window. Um, here again, more strong showers, isolated thunderstorms moving into the San Mateo, Santa Cruz County coastline right at the county border. More heavy rain, not as much rotation with this one. Thing is though, even as these sort of these isolated cells offshore overnight come inland, they could still produce a water spout or spin up somewhere. So it won't be completely over when the sun is set, but I think the central valley risk pretty much goes away after sunset. So you have a limited window. The clock is ticking. Okay, so this small line here, this is actually getting a little more active now. Uh, and it, if you look down, it's still a little bit linear. You can kind of see that there's a there's some structure to it, probably connected with this line up by Auburn. But um, but there are some individual, more discrete cells. So discrete meaning isolated, distinct from one another. So these these you know. I'm going to give it a little while longer. I'm going to keep an eye on these as they blow up, and if they don't do much, I think it's probably time for me to sign off. But I will wait to see if these do anything, because Murphy's Law states that the second I sign off, these will turn into massive rotating mini supercells. So maybe I'll, I'll save everybody the trouble by staying on and making sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah, and these, these, these have, you know, these have popped up pretty fast, so. These are the kinds of things that we were looking for today. Yeah, I think behind this line is likely the severe threat is decreasing, but we're still on the front side of this until sunset. Still could be some interesting stuff. Turn this off and just leave it as a single panel again, so it's easier to see. Um, they did actually continue that tornado warning. They they, they realigned it with the, where the cell is now, but you know there's still enough rotation. There could have been a tornado up there in the foothills. So um, obviously that cell near Chico has since moved on and dissipated. Things calmed down in Chico. I think things are pretty much done in terms of severe weather threat. As I said, you know north north northwest of Alliance. So up in this area, I don't think there's going to be much. To, to do the rest of the evening, but further south there is some still some potential. The cell north of Auburn is now producing quite a bit of lightning.
zooming in near Auburn, north of Auburn, up on I-80, Meadow Vista. Nice little thunderstorm there. Yeah, I'm still personally, I'm most interested in what's going on sort of in this domain, domain right now. So I'm going to wait and see what these do. And then we'll call it either way. Just to remind folks that in, in Southern California, uh, there, there will be considerable flood risks still uh, overnight into tomorrow in some places. And if there are intense convective downbursts, there could be uh, renewed flash flooding or debris flows in some places because everything has just remained so saturated uh, after the early February events that there is still some enhanced susceptibility to flood uh, and or debris flow risk in that region. As I say, everything of interest right now is literally in Sacramento County. Um, all the, uh, maybe a little bit farther south. All that's going on, trying to fit in there. Some folks saying it's pouring in Sacramento, so the showers are returning. Uh, we'll see what happens to this line. This line is mainly east of downtown Sacramento, but we'll see what it does in the next few minutes. Take a look at the Bay Area quickly. Once again, yeah, some pretty strong, I mean, again, pretty intense showers and thunderstorms in their own right, nothing severe, but uh, moving onshore, again, uh, San Mateo County coming up again from the south, there could be, once again, lightning and heavy rain and gusty wind coming in. I'm going to take a look at uh, Los Angeles, see what's going on down there right now. Slash flood warnings are still in effect, and again, in the lo lower elevations, not much rain, but at upper elevations, it's still pouring, and part of it is that you can't see it with the radar beam down there. But not, not, not a very exciting radar view, I've got to say. Back to Sacramento. This discontinuous line of developing thunderstorms is still the most interesting thing, I think, at this point.
Just waiting to see what happens. I'll probably have a better sense in the next few minutes whether these are going to do anything interesting or not. And, you know, just as a reminder, there there is, um, the National Weather Service just retweeted that there is, there is an elevated risk of flash flooding in the LA metro area specifically tomorrow. So this, this is something that will be occurring tomorrow. I don't currently have any live streams scheduled. I think I can probably get away with that one unless things escalate. Of course, if things do escalate beyond mild to moderate type flooding, I will break in and figure something out, find a time. Right now, I'm not planning on it, but we shall see. But that may be, uh, this storm is not over yet, and in Southern California, it, in, some, in some places, it's actually going to peak tomorrow. Take a look at the Bay Area again, and then we'll go up to Eureka. Again, these are pretty heavy showers. This could start to cause some flood problems in San Mateo County. These are over Pescadero and then inland over the, the, the Santa Cruz Mountains, extending into toward about Cupertino or so. And all of this is moving northward. Um, let's, let's double check. I don't think there's likely to be any rotation in there. Nah, there's, there's some swirly things, but it's nothing. It's pretty diffuse, so probably no water spouts or other swirly cloud features right now. But heavy rain, certainly, and that's, that's, you know, it's kind of back building. You can kind of see how the back edge of this is not really, it keeps rebuilding uh, at about that axis, so this area could see some flood problems. La Honda is among them, right up there in the mountains. And of course, that's a part of the county susceptible to mudslides. So this is the classic tail end downpour at the end of a storm that could bring a, a mudslide or two to the, the Santa Cruz Mountains. Check out the San. I'll just do a, another brief radar tour. Check out farther south in the San Joaquin. Again, just some isolated showers. Those didn't really end up doing much. We go up to Sacramento. This is the most active thing. There's a statement now out for the I-80 corridor. Let's see what it says. Special weather statement. Small hail and wind gusts of 40 miles an hour. So not a severe thunderstorm, but again, if you're driving on, on, on 80, that's uh, definitely adverse driving conditions. Uh, and then we have this line over Sacramento County from Galt up toward Folsom. I just want to see what that does. That's the really the, that's the last piece of interest right now. Not to say there won't be additional thunderstorms overnight, but in terms of the isolated tornado risk, the the, the window is is dwindling, and so this is probably the last region where something could potentially spin up at the last minute before the bell, as it were. Um, the tornado warning has finally expired uh, up north, so that, that, that did whatever it did, and maybe we'll find out about it later. Let's take a look at Eureka, see, see if there's anything interesting. Again, mainly to showers, some heavier ones. Mendocino County is more intense, but we can't really see it on the radar there, so not much to say about it. Yeah, these are, these are the most interesting cells. These are, these are the ones right now, so... See if there's any rotation. Uh, there is a little bit. Um, 
not super well defined. It's also very noisy. Let's see if we go to higher tilts. If I can get rid of some of the noise. Yes, no, maybe. Doesn't seem to be changing, let's see. That's a little bit better. Um, I'll go back to tilt one. So there's a little bit of rotation starting to show up in these. Uh, this one east of Rancho Cordova. It's, it's not strong, it's diffuse, but there is a little bit. Uh, and that, it, you know, these are convective cells, so strongly sheared environment, they do want to rotate. These are starting to develop into more of a linear feature, so we'll see what happens. If it's a linear feature, you might get some torrential rain and some flood risk and some lightning, but less likely to see a tornado or two. So that that agitated cumulus field it is filling in with again scattered showers down here but they're fairly weak so unless they intensify considerably it's going to be hard to get anything more than that new statement down in the bay area I'll go back down there for this blob of heavy convective rain let's see what it says probably gusty winds is my guess yeah, wind gusts to 50 miles an hour along with the heavy rain. What else is new? That keeps happening there over and over again this year. They say, I'm pretty much just giving it a few more minutes to see what happens in this area, if this does anything dramatic or not. There is still a slight chance, uh, if that doesn't further develop, that something else in this general vicinity could pop up this evening after that, uh, but the, the likelihood goes down as the sun goes down, the sun is about to go down, so... There could still be some pretty hefty overnight thunderstorm activity, and even into parts of tomorrow, by the way. It's just less likely to be severe or bring isolated tornadoes, but it could still bring torrential downpours and hail and lightning and all that stuff. And you never know. Sometimes the it's never it's sometimes it's not the day you think it's gonna be, sometimes it's the day after where you end up getting that isolated tornado. So it's not totally impossible, but it's much less likely than it was today. Whoops, didn't mean to click that there. Yeah, so the Weather Prediction Center did mention that it, although the severe threat is now de decreasing, the likelihood of bands of showers and intense thunderstorms that could cause flash flooding over Northern California are will be elevated tonight, and that, that makes sense to me. These cells are intensifying a bit in eastern Sacramento County. Again, a little bit more linear than discrete mode, but they're still intensifying. Probably going to start to get some lightning out of this Sacramento County shortly. 
Looks like it's right over Folsom right now. Matoma Station. And conditions have cooled off too. They're still around 60 degrees, but luckily in the upper 50s. And that wind pattern is no longer quite as favorable. So really, as I mentioned, there's a, there's a narrow zone between about Sacramento and Modesto where there's still some favorable kinematics for a tornadic spin up. But the, the, that, that space is, is narrowing as the evening progresses. So folks are saying that thunder and lightning has begun in Folsom. That probably means that there is some in-cloud lightning that's not being detected yet with this stuff. Yeah, right now the most interesting cell is this one in far northeastern Sacramento County. And there's also another linear convective band now developing just east of Davis, looks like, right over the radar site. So we'll see what happens when that moves a bit east. I see that the uh, the viewership is slowly uh, attenuating. Although there's still a few hundred of you on there, so impressive. Zoom in a bit to what's going on in Sacramento County. Again, these look like robust but not extreme thunderstorms up to this point. Well, folks, I think what I'm going to do is uh, officially call it, uh, which of course means that something interesting will probably happen from this line that's developing in Sacramento County right now. Uh, again, still a chance of some isolated severe weather this evening, but I think it's lower than it was earlier. And um, we didn't end up seeing the widespread outbreak that was possible today across the Sacramento Valley, at least uh, not to this point. Uh, but Definitely a, a day um, at the unusually high end of the severe weather parameter space for Northern California. Uh, could be some overnight storms continuing. And then I think into tomorrow, uh, the, the risk of flash flooding into Southern California will be substantial. And this will once again include the LA Basin tomorrow, overnight and into tomorrow. So 
uh, additional central coast and, and south coast flood risk overnight. S can still going to see bands of showers and thunderstorms over northern California, which can produce strong gusty winds and torrential downpours. The biggest risk with them into the evening and overnight is honestly going to be flash flooding locally and some mudslides. Uh, not widespread, but at least occasional. Uh, and then the flood risk in Southern California will be considerable tomorrow. So no live session tomorrow currently scheduled, but uh, if something uh, unexpected happens, um, that may change. So again, there are still some, some big thunderstorms developing in Sacramento County, but I think we've sort of lost the opportunity for them to be uh, for, for any sort of widespread severe weather. So could happen, could be localized. Um, but, uh, and if it happens, of course, it'll happen right after I sign off to Murphy's Law. But otherwise, uh, this has been a nice long session. Uh, and uh, I'm impressed that there's this many people who have stayed on the whole time. And uh, if for some reason something insane happens, maybe I'll pop back in, but I'm not anticipating that tonight. So, uh, have a good evening, and I'll see you for the next one, which will probably be a more regularly scheduled session, date and time TBD.